Hello there. Hello there. Hello there. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Am I live? Am I live? Can you guys hear me? Am I live? Am I live? Can you guys hear me? Am I live? Yes. Yes. I fixed it. I fucking 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 fixed it. Huh? Who said I couldn't do it? Who said it wasn't possible? Who said, Agostino, you don't have the talent? Agostino, you're not white. Agostino, you're not handsome. Agostino, you're not skinny. Agostino, you haven't got big tits or a big bum or a wet, juicy pussy. You can't do this stuff. What makes you think you can do this stuff? Well, I proved you wrong, motherfuckers. I proved you fucking wrong. I'm here, I'm back, and I'm queer. Look at my fucking bandana. Look at my fucking bandana. Alright? Look at my bandana. Respect my queerness right now. <laughs> What's going on, people? What's going on, people? What's going on, people? I'm back, man. I'm so happy I'm back. I was so worried I couldn't be able to stream because my other computer kind of died on me. But I managed to do some managed to do some things, right? And I'm back and I'm ready to go. So I'm fucking happy. It's clear. It's not going crazy. The CPU usage is super low. I'm streaming nice. No jittery. You know what I mean? I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. I'm not going to lie. I feel, I feel kind of nice right now. You feel me? I can just stream and say things now. I don't need to be worried that it's going to crash and shit. You feel me? So, big up everybody out here who was believing in me. Big up people that stood by me. Big up Uche, Koyla, I see you. You guys stood by me. The rest of you guys, you didn't stand by me, man. You didn't believe it was possible. You didn't stand by me. You didn't hold me down. You feel me? I'm back. I'm back, bro. Don't ever doubt me, man. Don't ever fucking doubt me. I'm back. Streams are back, bro. Streams are back. Streams are fucking back. Because the the, the, the Taz I did earlier today was fucking jittery as fuck. I was fucking pausing all over the place. So I'm happy that I'm a bit, little bit back now. And everything is good. And everything is good. So big up the stream chat. Appreciate all of you. I need to fucking change this, isn't it? Should I change the stream chat a little bit? I need to change that bit there. Why is that bit looking like that? I don't like that bit. It says sign into chat. But it's fine. You, you, you guys get it, innit? it? You get it. You get it. You know what's going on. You get the vibe. It works for now. I'll leave it for now. I'm not going to change something too much, but I'm going to get rid of that little sign into chat thing. I don't like how that kind of pops up there. But regardless, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate all of you. Um... I know it's been a bit of a mad one these last few days. I do apologize for all the delays and all the madness has been going on. But hopefully, things should be okay now going forward because I did get things somewhat a little bit sorted. Let me just put this up to 9 dB so you can hear me properly. And that should be about it. But it should be nice and clear, nice and loud now. Nice and clear, nice and loud now. At least you can see me. At least you can see me. Exactly. Great stream. I can finally see him. Exactly. <laughs> we got Ricky Pitcher. <laughs> That dark stream was ghetto, innit? it? That stream before it was black, that was ghetto, innit, it, right? I might start doing that. I might do that more often, bro. Just a black screen. That was ghetto, innit? it? You remember? That was fucking ghetto. <laughs> but we're back, man. We're back. We're back. Big up everybody tuning in. Appreciate all of you. Um, always a fucking pleasure to have you here with me. And I'm happy we can stream. We can have some fun. We can ha ha he he and do the Lord's work when we need to do the Lord's work. You feel me? Cool. Bless. Let's fucking go. First things first. I want to check out a Snort Hogan video. So big up Snort Hogan. I haven't done a lot of uh, DSP in a while. So let's do some DSP stuff. Snort Hogan's got a new video. So I'm going to test how good this computer is compared to my other one and i'm gonna play a youtube video usually youtube videos on my computer go a bit crazy so let's see what youtube how youtube plays on here right so let's go to scene two and let's see what happens when we try to play a youtube video let's actually get this stream chat or this chat box looking a bit different as well bear with me a second here let's make sure this box is looking okay whoopsie daisy how do i look up nope Nope, there they go. Uh, uh, uh. Let's move it over here. Let's 
that, is that working? Nope, 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 that works over there. Let's put that like that. Uh, and then maybe just, maybe we'll increase, oh, well, maybe increase the size a little bit there. That works now, doesn't it? Yeah, cool. Okay, let's see how this YouTube, let's see how this Snort Burner video works. Hopefully this works. Let's let's play a bit of DSP. Let's see what DSP has been saying. Long time no hear from DSP. Let's switch to fucking headphones as well. Let's see if this works. Hopefully this fucking works. Hopefully. Save the pig. There you go. Okay. What the heck? A pig with a. Can you guys hear? Can you can you hear that in the background? I don't think you can. Can I? Um, I don't know why it's working on that bit. Can you hear it? Can you guys hear it? I don't think you can. Can you? Uh, is an audio another audio device needed there? Yeah, there is. Cool. One second. Let me copy that one, and you should be able to hear it now going forward. Cool. Can you can you hear the audio going through? So this can you hear it? Can you guys hear the audio? Can you hear this? Hurry oh, yeah. up! You can hear it. All right, let's lower the volume a little bit because this is fucking super high. Let's get to 50. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Piggy. This is the Piggy. Just put it down there. I'll put it. Save the pig, the game. The whole game you're trying to save the pig's life. Help! Something beyond his words. How's that so far? That's okay, isn't it, right? That's perfectly fine, right? Yeah, that's the, yeah that sounds. Okay, cool. Yay, we're back. We're fucking back, guys. We're fucking back. We are fucking back, okay? People thought we couldn't do it. We're fucking back. Big up Young Old Vibes. Sarlux, I see you. D uh, and Fief Keith, I see you. Cloud K20, Coiler. My guy, Coiler, what's good, man? Big up Smoak, I see you there. Smoak. 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 Big up Eddie D. Big up Ricky Pitcher, my guy. Walk one, walk one. Bang your fucking chest. Oh, I don't, you know what I don't have on here? Oh, I don't have an alert box, do I? That's the one thing I don't have. I don't have a fucking alert box set up. So I'll just read out anything that comes through. But I don't have an alert box set up. That's the only thing I fucking I fucked up on. How do you do an alert box again? Is that just a browser, isn't it? I'm sure it's just a browser setting. I don't have an alert box set up. So let me do an alert box. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me let me get this alert box thing set up. That's one thing I don't have, actually. But everything's working good, man. We're back, isn't it? We're, we're fucking back. We're somewhat fucking back. It's premature. You know what I'm going to do now going forward? I'm not going to do anything else on this computer. This computer is only going to be for fucking... Um, this computer is only going to be for the purposes of... Uh, what's it called? Of streaming. Nothing else is going to be done on this fucking computer. I'm going to I'm gonna keep it super tight. You feel me? Um, That's it. Nothing else. So let's see. I think an alert, an alert box is a browser thing, isn't it? I think so. Alert box is a browser, so let's do alert box. Alert, alerts, right? And I think it works, right? Is that how it works out? I'm sure that's how it's meant to be. Yeah, I think that's how it works. It should be okay there. So that alert box would just go here, and everything should be all right. If I just do this, right? Boom. And if I do this one, I think it's the same, right? Yeah, I think so. Cool. Uh, let me just copy that alert box then. Let's just go back to fucking DSP. Where's DSP? DSP is over there. Let's copy this alert box. Bish bash bosh. Apologies, I'm doing this. I apologies, I'm doing this right now. I should have done this earlier, but I just forgot to do it before. So it should be okay now. Everything should be fine. Everything should be fine now. I think so. If it's not fine, whatever, but it should be fine. I think so. It should be fine. It took me a minute. You know what I mean? This is like black men in tech. This is what it is. This is fucking affirmative action actually this is what it is this is what affirmative action looks like this laptop don't close exactly <laughs> big up <cutesy. laughs> this laptop don't close uh how are you gonna goon about your computer <laughs> Uche. Uche, you gotta think more you gotta think highly of me man please don't think so lowly of me man i beg of you don't 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 have those thoughts about me <laughs> You guys thinking I'm turning up late for these streams because I'm just on my P I'm just on my on my PC gooning. You get me? On my PC gooning, bruh. Alright, cool. That should be okay now for now, innit? That should be okay. I hate that fucking signing thing. Honestly, I fucking hate that signing thing. It's so fucking GA. 
You get me? I'm not gonna say the word, but it is a bit GA. Anyway, so there we go. It came through. Big up Ricky Picture, appreciate Camera's you. Camera's been on the whole time. Yeah, you know how it is. Camera's been on the whole time. Big up Ricky Picture, appreciate you. Um I'm sure you heard the alert box as well, didn't you? Right? Camera's been on the whole time. It's fucking hilarious. Um let's go DSP, let's go. Okay, okay. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Big up the sky. Big up the stream chat. Big up Sky Space Sky. I see you. Big up everybody tuning in. I see all of you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Appreciate you all as per usual. And thank you for um being patient with me and holding me down because it's been a bit of a nightmare the last few days. I know it has, but it seems a bit clearer. Even the emojis. Can you guys notice the emojis down on the corner of the screen? Aren't they going a bit more smoother now? They're not fucking as jittery before fuck man it's actually going pretty well i'm not going to speak too soon but it's actually going pretty well so big up 40 fps big up myself and big up everybody else that gave me suggestions about how to fix stuff everything's going well now cool let's go let's fucking roll let's see what let's see what dsp saying but in a moment it's gone consumed with fear well we didn't get the inside check I'm sorry we can't i'm sorry you suck what the hell is this fucking thing what is this? I love how DSP basically hates this game, Baldur's Gate, but for some reason he's too shook to say he hates it, hates it, because I think it's the game that makes him the most money. So whenever he's streaming Baldur's Gate, all these dents love to fucking donate for this game. But deep down, he absolutely hates it. He hates Baldur's Gate. So it's fucking crazy to see him have to play this game just to make money. <laughs> but it's killing him every day. And from what I can tell, it kills him because... He doesn't seem to like not knowing things like he, he gets very insecure when he feels like a game is like like trying to test his intelligence or whatever. He doesn't like that sort of stuff. So he hates Dungeons and Dragons. Obviously, he hates on Baldur's Gate. It just get, it just annoys him. Um, so let's hear it. It's a restoration pod. Oh, I didn't know that. And I oh, yeah. We're, we're also going to cover the Diddy stuff. We're going to read the whole court documents that's dropped. I've got the whole court document on my fucking PC, laptop, sorry. We're going to read through the whole thing because it's a bit of a madness. So we're going to read through the whole Diddy thing, go through some Brendan clips, watch some other clips, some Yuri stuff, all that good shit. You know how we do random show settings. Let's fucking go. I wasted it. Shit. Oh, come on. I didn't know. That was a complete waste. Oh, I could have come back and used it. Load game. What's he going to do now? <laughs> God damn it. Save scum number one. He loves a good save scum, isn't he? Yeah, he loves a good save scum. That's not an important scum. save scum, yeah, okay? Fuck him. That's not an important one. Fuck That's him. terrible gameplay. Exactly. Take a paycheck for that, huh? It was. Except the paycheck for that quality gameplay right there. All right, but good stuff, right? Good progress. Thanks for chilling. Thanks for supporting. See you tomorrow for more Endgame and maybe the conclusion. It's incredible, isn't it? Like, in without one minute, it's incredible how much he relies on just like a small number of dents to prop up his entire business. Without certain one minute man and other peeps, like he would be literally out on the street panhandling. That's how fucking fraught his situation is. I could never imagine having a life like that where your literal salary is dependent on people's charity, like this to this level. You know what I mean? Where you're literally like, you're not too sure if someone doesn't send you certain tips, then you might not be able to pay your bills. It's like, bruh, bruh, you're just playing video games. It's not that deep. Enjoy the video games that you play, share it with people, have some fun and kind of go from there. You don't need to be fucking panhandling on the internet. It's so fucking bizarre. This whole trend of like, it's weird because I feel like on the men's side, it's become normal for, to like to beg people for literal money online and say, hey, give me stuff. And I think it's also somewhat acceptable on the women's side to have men, strange men you don't know, just fly you out. It, those two things have become very normal in this society that we live in nowadays. And I think both things shouldn't be normal. They should be quite, you know, weird. They should be, a, you know, people should look at you a bit strange. If a young girl that's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of maybe going out and visiting this guy. Who is he? I don't know him. It's like, what? He's just going to fly out and just visit some dude that you never met just because he's going to pay your flight. It's like, what? You're just going to be sitting online helping people send you money so you can pay your bills and take your wife out for dinner. Like, what? That's not the right way to go about things. But again, what do I know? Who's in a Baldur's Gate 3, I guess we'll see. All right, see you then. Okay, guys, that is it for today's stream. I did save, so we should be good here. I also love the Amazon wishlist thing. He doesn't actually promote it that much, actually. 
I love DSP that because he always wants money. He doesn't really promote the Amazon wish list. He doesn't want people buying him things. He wants you to give him cash. Forget buying him things. He doesn't. He doesn't really. He doesn't really push that. <laughs> he hates it. <laughs> He's such a scumbag. I swear to God. He's such a scumbag. <laughs> and uh, I hope that you guys enjoy. As we're heading into Endgame, I wonder if we'll beat it tomorrow or if we'll need Friday's stream. It doesn't matter. I have two streams laid out for it. Whether we beat it tomorrow or we beat it Friday is a moot point. We're definitely beating it in the next couple of streams, right? You wondered where all my money went. It went to mobile games. By the way, I have an idea. I want to run it by all of you. Okay? Since you're all here early and we're here to chat for a little bit extra. So, we've been trying to think of some ideas of things for me to do during my upcoming birthday marathon event, which will be Saturday, April 6th. That's about By the way, this is also another thing I hate about DSP. He loves to crowdsource ideas. He never really figures out his own ideas. He wants everybody to kind of join in and give him suggestions. Like, bro, you run the stream. Think of your idea, propose it, or just do it. If it doesn't work, then change it. But he wants everyone to go through every little fucking detail of an idea. What to play, when to play it, how long to play it, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, fuck. And then once he does play it, he wants his fucking handheld. It's so annoying. I absolutely despise that bit about him. About a week and a half away. Um, I got an interesting idea. Go on, tell us. Let's see what you think. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. How about uh -huh. during my big birthday bash marathon? Uh -huh. We do. Also, anyone over the age of 25 saying they're having a birthday bash, they should get hit in the head with a shovel. Any person, any human over the age of 25 who refers to a celebration of the day that they were born as a birthday bash should get hit in the face with a fucking shovel. And not on the handle, the shovel bit. And not on the side, on the flat bit, the front bit. You know, the like the, the the fucking edge should be fucking slapped in the side of your... It should be shoved into your face so that you end up with a fucking slit. And it's fucking... You have this gaping kind of wide chasm on the side of your fucking face. Basically, the outline of my shades. That's how your fucking eyes should be. Birthday bashes are for children. Children should have birthday bashes. If you're over 25 and you're talking about a birthday bash, you know what I think? I think you're talking about, you know pleasing yourself during your birthday that's what it sounds like to me when you say when you talk about a birthday bash i think of somebody jacking off that's what i think of i think of an adult man standing outside of his window standing up looking out of a window looking at school kids as he that's what i think of when someone says a birthday bash if you don't want people to think that about you don't say birthday bash say hey i'm celebrating my birthday hey i'd love to how love you to come out for some b-day drinks hey it's my born day but never say birthday bash Never say birthday bash if you're over the age of 25, unless you want to get hit in the face with a shovel. A special React event. Listen to this. Phil reacts to his most popular YouTube videos ever. Look at him. Look at the... Phil reacts to his most popular YouTube videos ever. Phil reacts. What kind of... Do look, at, look at that head. Look at that head. That's a proper light bulb head, isn't it? Imagine having a head like that. He has a proper light bulb head. That is a light bulb head, no? That's what a light bulb looks like. Or am I mistaken? Isn't that what a light bulb looks like? Phil with the oddly shaped head has legit light bulb head. Look, that's it. That's Phil's head. Can you see that? Can you see Phil's head? That is a light bulb, you see? You superimpose that light bulb onto Phil's head and that's what it fucking looks like. Jesus Christ. I, I didn't even know you could be this lazy. How about we'll just go, I'll make a playlist ahead of time of my uh -huh. most viewed videos ever on YouTube. Actually, I'll actually look at all my channels. Oh, you do a bit of work. You actually do a bit of work. Wow. You're actually going to go and look at your videos ahead of time, check out which ones you should be watching, and then make a list of them. <gasps> no way. DSP actually doing some work before he turns up on stream. Fucking crazy. Put them in order. Like the biggest video, the next biggest video, really? the next biggest video. Amazing. And we can just like... So like in descending order from like the most popular to the least popular. Okay, cool. Like how they already have it on a playlist sorted out on the videos anyway. All right, great. Amazing. React to them together. Just like I've been doing the retro reacts on DSP throwback for certain games. Imagine doing the biggest videos I've ever had on YouTube. Oh my God. Imagine. Imagine watching the biggest videos you've ever done. By the way, I am I might be really odd or I might be a bit... Redacted? <laughs> I need to say the word again. I might be a little bit redacted, a little bit regarded, but I find it very un I'm very uncomfortable watching myself, even when I'm doing clips, 
let alone sitting on stream watching myself in full. I've never done it and I'll never do it. I don't understand how people can do it. You remember those those videos of like Brendan we were watching where he'll be Brendan will sit down on the golden hour and you'll be like laughing at himself. He'll play a whole YouTube video of himself just laughing, just sitting there like <laughs> like who does that? Is that like a is that like a sociopath thing? Or am I the weird one and I should be doing more of that? What do you guys think? Am I am I a social am I a am I the sociopath or a daily sociopath? In terms of like sitting down on stream or on video and watching a full video of yourself to your audience like what what is that about it seems a bit strange right i think that could be something interesting because number one people might not even realize what are the most popular videos i've ever done on youtube right no one cares <laughs> and number two uh -huh. it would be good variety instead of it being like a game that we watch a bunch of it could be 10 15 minutes of one game 10 15 minutes of another game you know jumping around and watching different eras of content that i made because some of my, my most viewed videos are actually quite old. Some were at, actually right at the launch of like PS4. What? One is a game review that I did on my KO Gaming channel when it was called that. KO um, Gaming channel? That's pretty neat. And then what we'll do is we'll do it live KO on the Gaming stream for the birthday. Channel. But I'll upload those videos to the DSP Throwback channel. So the Throwback channel will have some extra content for that week. I think that would be a pretty good idea. And I'm not mm. saying that we're going to do it the whole stream it either. You know, we would do it for a little bit, until we, basically until we get bored. Keep in mind that day I'm going to be having some drinks. So I have some buzz to commentary. Oh, wow. You're going to be, gonna be funny, buzzed. Amazing. Um, <laughs> You're going to be buzzed. How fucking cool. So hopefully that's a good idea. I'm going to run buzz, that by everyone tomorrow DSP. on the podcast. But Before I think that might that. be something good to do. Right? The, the reactionary content is the worst kind of content. It's like, I have nothing to say or do myself. I can't do anything creative or positive for myself. So instead, I take what other people say and do, and then I comment on it. That's not creative content. That's the easiest way out. Thanks for chilling with me tonight. I will just remind you, if you can, please support tonight's stream. Uh, as you can see, uh, there really has not been... Uh, <laughs> there really has not been that much uh, support for Like a Dragon in many, many, many weeks. Why does he just get banned from this on YouTube? Do do YouTube don't enforce terms of service? Is that why? Why can't he just get banned for this shit? How is he allowed to just sit on YouTube and just beg people for money? Why is that allowed? Is it because he makes a lot of money on memberships? And YouTube kind of makes takes a cut from that and that's why they don't ban him. Why is he just allowed to sit on stream and just beg people for money outright? Not even being ashamed of it. Just be like, yeah, yeah. Like, how is that even allowed? How is that allowed? It's so bizarre. He's been doing this for fucking literal decades. It's now approaching. Just sits on you like, um, it's, it's a bit slow. It's a bit slow. So if it's slow, go get a fucking job, you fucking waste of space. I think we had like one night randomly where we had someone had to, did a big tip. And outside of that, it's been like a month since people really have supported this playthrough. Uh, I have did it mostly as fan service because number one, I love this franchise. And number two, oh, really? I know there is an audience for it. But oh, really? what can I say? Um... Tonight, if you can support in any way, please do. No, we Thank won't. Thank you if you do. We don't want. But uh, I'm not going to bring it up all night. We're just yes, play you will. You'll keep time. bringing it up all okay? the time. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the hardcore begging season. <laughs> just say the word. He hate me, DSP super fans. Can I be unbanned for the finale of Like a Dragon Infinite? Well, uh, no. Gotta love DSP, innit? Having fucking legit racists in these fucking chat and refusing to ban them. Having legit PDFs in these chat, refusing to ban them. Make, you know, make, making, making, uh, you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't even want to go into the rest of the people that are in his chat, but it's no coincidence that one of the most deplorable content creators of all time also has one of the worst, one of the most like weirdest fan bases ever when it comes to people in his chat. It's no surprise at all. Oh, because you're just going to get re-banned again anyway. That's why I'm not unbanning you, because I don't want the finale to be about you being in here and then getting banned again. So there you go. There's your answer. I, just, I told you, I had it up to here with the drama on the nonsense, so no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <clears throat> like, if I could trust Kirk to come back and not be rebanned the same exact night, I probably would unban him, but there's no point. He's just gonna get rebanned again for being the same person he hasn't learned, you know? I've also received another $10 tip tonight. And throughout the night, a complete idiot was donating small tips until he reached one, but it's okay. You look dapper with that hat on and the glasses only complement the picture. Well, thank you. He's so ugly, isn't it? It's not his fault, of course. Genetics are genetics, but he's so fucking ugly. This man's allegedly only 41 years old. 41 or 42 years old. He legitimately looks like he's in his 60s. Look at him. Just look at that. Look at the, f 
Look at what he has to play with. Fuck me. I just wear a mask if that was me. I just wear a hockey mask, Playboy Carty style. I swear to God, I'd wear a hockey mask, Playboy Carty style. That's all I'm doing. I'm not going out like that. I'm not showing my face. Like he even looks bad in a fedora. Most guys, you put a fedora on and it kind of gives you a bit of a like, ah, a bit of a, hey, can I suck your pussy? You know what I mean? It gives you a little bit of a edge. But this guy is like, he puts a fedora on and like women scream. Kids like, you know, kids do fucking supoko in themselves and shit. Or supoko, whatever that fucking term is when Japanese people fucking kill themselves. Like, what the fuck is this? Also, is, this, is it not, it's not Sudoku. Is it supoko? Or is it Sudoku? I don't know which one it is. I think Sudoku is a game, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, maybe Sudoku is a game. I think that also might be racist, isn't it? To say that it's Sudoku. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> Dude, this person is being very nice tonight with their compliments and their support. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the $10 tip. <clears throat> I've never run into this thing before. What is it, a money creature? Yeah, look. It's a money creature. It just throws money around. What the hell was that? For the record, I don't know if this is the same person who's been tipping all night, or if it's a couple people. Why does it matter, by the way? Have you ever heard of a streamer that does this, by the way? Who keeps a, a check on who is tipping, who is like, is that a normal thing? It's such a bizarre thing to be concerned about. I'm not sure if the same person who's been tipping, I'm not sure if it's the same, it's like, who cares? He talks as if he's like, some, I don't know, it's just a weird thing. I don't know. I can't tell because I only see what you write in your messages. I would have to like manually. Yo, big up mental note. I'm not burying anybody, people. Like, he's a man. I just have some ha ha he he's. Yuri is a bit of a waste of space, but we don't kill anybody out here. We just laugh. We point. We have some fun. We hug each other. And at night, we might fuck each other. <laughs> if you know that reference, you know that reference. But yeah, big up mental note. Appreciate you. Really check email addresses, which I'm, I'm not going to do during the stream. Um, yeah, we're in the home stretch. We definitely should beat this story tomorrow night and then continue on with Kiryu's story and finish it, you know, over the course of the rest of the week. Uh, good stuff. Thank you, guys. Great chill stream. Great support. Everything great. No complaints for me. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you all. See you then. Fuck you. The behind the scenes things going on with mobile games. We don't want to see Here we go. Here we go. Let's get some pulls. <laughs> Come on. Get some pulls. Pull the gotcha. Pull on my gotcha. Come on. If there's ever one person who deserves a cargo ship to run straight through the front of their living room, it's fucking DSP. You know we gotta get some pulls. This is just goes to prove, again, I said it again and again, the people who are in charge of these companies don't under even understand the industry. Look at those fucking snort sacks. Look at those snort sacks. They are snorting, isn't it? Look at those snort sacks. What is that? I've got sinus issues and I don't even have that. I've got fucking sinus issues and I don't even have that. What the fuck are these snort sacks? What are these things? Are they like full of like bogey phlegm like what is in that and bison ju like what is that look at that god almighty he's fought by the way guys he's 41 years old 41 years old look at him he looks like he hasn't seen the sun in decades not even a bit of vitamin d like just even in terms of tablets and shit, nothing. Fucking hell. He's the kind of guy that gets annoyed when his wife opens the windows or opens the blinds. Like, fuck off. Look at that. Bloody hell. Absolute. Jah. God damn it. They're talking about right. How often do you think there's going to be a giant explosive profitable boom in console gaming? Maybe once every console generation, there's a, a spike. spike. It's not going to be constant Constantly. money pouring out of it. Yeah. But there will be times when there yeah. will be giant profitable streaks. You know? Yeah. Do you think that Xbox's strategy recently is working? Yeah. Buy up every fucking third-party studio? I hate the little upspeak thing he does as well. I hate everything about the guy. But the little upspeak thing he does? Like, fuck off. And then literally just be hands-off and let them do whatever they want. And pump out unfinished messes like Redfall. 
Do you think that's going to make money? Money? But that's what Phil Spencer's doing, and now that that's failing, uh -huh. he's saying, well, we still have to make money somehow, so cut everyone's jobs. Yeah. No, Phil. Here's what you do. You get fired, and someone else steps into your role who knows how to run a company, and then you don't have to do that anymore. Why don't we fire you? Can you can you be fired? Is that possible? Can we put can we put in an application so you can be fired? Can we put an application in so you can be fired? Is it possible that we can get you placed on the nearest bridge somewhere and get a cargo you know boat to run into one of the fucking pillars on that fucking bridge when only you and you alone are on it? Is that possible? Can we do that? Is there some sort of system we have to you know? put into place is there a place we can send the application for that in like what what needs to happen to make that happen can we like can we actually light someone you on who fire actually take charge instead of sit back and act like a frat boy and dress like you're in college right someone who can actually like fucking put their foot boy. down and say here's what we need to do with our game that sounded kind of racist isn't it there's something racist about that like a frat boy <laughs> <laughs> they have to be good. They have to qualify these criteria that gamers are looking for. We have to be sure that we're hitting these markers so that people will want to play our games on our consoles. Not, oh well, the games industry is in a downturn, so I guess we just cut jobs until it comes back. You're a fucking idiot. No, you're the idiot. Why am I toxic? More toxic, more toxic, toxic more toxic. Bill Spencer is a fucking idiot. What he's saying is ridiculous. I read this article this morning. I was like, are you out of your fucking mind? I love how DSP thinks he has all the answers. For all the issues that are happening now in gaming industry, DSP thinks he has all the answers. He thinks he is the be all and end all when it comes to biz, you know, game industry business talk. Which is funny because this man's declared bankruptcy from playing fucking, what, WWE Championships. WWE Champions, sorry. Right? This man gets $100,000 um, per year as a salary from fucking playing video games online, but he's always, like, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. You can't even fucking keep the lights on in his house without, you know, relying on the charity of others. Yet he wants to give these big corporations advice on how they should run their business. It's like, bruh, maybe figure out a way of how you can ensure that you kind of can, you know, can keep going to fucking total wine as opposed to what this Phil Spencer guy can do. Maybe, maybe mind your business, bro. It's just insane. You know, it's absolutely insane. We're, I hate to say it, but, you know, the, the whole corporate America in particular is an industry where people fail up. And what oh, yeah? I mean by that is these people are horrible at their jobs, right? They do horrible things, mm -hmm. and they're still rich, and they still succeed somehow. Mm -hmm. Because it's like when you're once you're at that level, mm -hmm. you literally never never get any, any accountability for what you do. You just like continuously you. get paid. So like you, basically. I love how he projects. I love how he projects. I love how he projects. So basically like you. No consequences for your shitty actions. No consequences for your racist work, racist things that you said over the years. No consequences for you being a scam artist. No consequences for you being a liar. No consequences for you for you manipulating people, banning everyone in the chat for disagreeing with what you say. No consequences for being an absolute piece of shit. You still get to you know live and thrive on YouTube despite being an, ab an abhorrent, abhorrent loser. <laughs> like what the fuck? <clears throat> there you go. Michael Caine just said something very interesting in the what chat. You ready? He says, there's an old video interview clip with Steve Jobs. Uh -huh. He explains why companies fail. Uh -huh. Because salespeople get promoted to decision-making positions and salespeople don't care about quality. Look at that face. You got Eve Gamow. The little, the little smug face he does as if he knows anything about sales, as if he knows anything about running a business, as if he knows anything outside of how to run a stream, which he barely knows how to do. Come on, DSP. Shut the fuck up, bro. Over here saying Sea of Thieves, excuse me, I said Sea of Thieves, that's incorrect. Skull and Bones is a quad A game worth $70. The game is a pile of dog shit, but he says that because he's a salesman. You got Phil Spencer over here telling everyone, oh, all these studios we're acquiring are great and everything's good. Then he completely hands off with anything and mm -hmm. all the games they pump out are dog shit. Mm -hmm. So then he says, oh, well, our industry's in a downturn, so we have to lay off people to be profitable. I don't think I own a Henley shirt. I'm not, not going to lie. I think this is the kind of shirt they get, someone gives you when you turn like 40. Right? Does somebody give you a Henley when you turn 40? I don't think I've ever owned a shirt like this. A long sleeve shirt with three buttons. Why would you have that? Why would you own a charcoal long sleeve shirt with three buttons? <laughs> Why could you possibly need this? <laughs> it's such a bizarre top, isn't it? Like, like it's, I, I've never understood the utility of these fucking things. I, I don't get it what's the point of a henley 
You can't wear a Henley under a t-shirt. You can't wear it under a long sleeve. You can't wear it under pajamas because you just sweat. So what, you wear it as a pajama top. But then people wear Henleys outdoors. So is a Henley a replacement for a long sleeve t-shirt? Why don't you wear a long sleeve t-shirt or wear a sweater instead? Or wear a, you know, a cardigan? Why would you wear a Henley if you want buttons on it? It's such a bizarre piece of clothing. I've never really understood the utility of Henleys or why people wear them, apart from people that look like DSP. If you wear a Henley, you're, a prob you're probably a DSP. You know, that's the issue. You're in charge. You are the people in charge of the companies. And the people who are getting punished are the people below you for your bad decisions. Oh, yeah. Do you see a problem with that, perhaps? Yeah, I right? see a problem really? with that, perhaps. Listen, if I make a bad decision, and if I do shitty things here on stream or whatever, I'm the Not, one... Nothing happens. I'm the one. I'm the one. One who gets punished for, correct? Right? I'll be the one. I'm the one. Nope, that's my lie. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Um, Frack Fick Nugan. Why couldn't I wear Henley? You're saying, uh, don't be angry because I couldn't wear it. Why couldn't I wear Henley? It's just a, it's just a shirt. It's just a long sleeve shirt with buttons on it. Why couldn't I wear it? Or is it only made for white people? Actually, I've never seen a black person wear a Henley. Maybe you're onto something, Frack Farfic. Maybe Farfic is onto something. I've never seen a black person wear a Henley. You know? Never in my life have I seen a black person wear a Henley. So maybe that's why. Maybe Henleys are only sold in like predominantly Caucasian areas. And they're given to you, like folded, when you turn 40. Here, my lord. My lord. La Henley has arrived. You know? Maybe that's the whole point of a Henley. It's like, it's like when you come into your adulthood as a white man, you get given it, and you suddenly you feel like a dad. Or suddenly you feel like a dog owner, right? Suddenly you start washing your car on Sundays and shit. In, in the driveway with a hose. Even though you're not meant to. It's your little, it's your little rebellion, you know? Maybe. There you liar, you. I'm good at lying. <laughs> Imagine if I said something awful on a stream that was terrible, and then other people suffered for it. Not me. Some other, I'm fine. I stay where I am, and I just keep, you know, I give, give Sylvia a YouTuber, but everyone else gets hurt. Imagine that. That's the positions these people are in. They can literally just sit here and make mistake after mistake after mistake, and their companies just continue on, and they continue on, but all the people under them get suffer for it. Oh, DSP, um, what you call it? Protector of the people, right? DSP, fighting for the rights of employees around the world. All hail DSP. That's like me, right? That's like me. <laughs> I love still hugging. That's pretty insane, I mean, don't uh, you think? Now. Big up snowball now. I just, that drives me bonkers. Say that again? That drives me bonkers. How do you say bonkers? That's pretty insane, don't you think? I just, that drives me bonkers. How do you say bonkers? That drives me bonkers. Huh? What? That's pretty insane, don't you think? I just that drives me bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. <laughs> How did he say that? What kind of accent is that? That's pretty insane, don't you think? I just that drives me bonkers. Bonkers. Bonkers, no? Why is it bonkers? That drives me bonkers. <laughs> okay. That you have people in charge. I mean, I've already had an issue with Phil Spencer over the years with some of the dumb things he said. I, I keep telling you guys, you can't trust Whenever him. I hear Phil Spencer, I think of Phil Spector. It's a guy, because he's essentially just, a, just just like we just said, he's a salesman. He's not a CEO. He's not a And you're a beggar. Leader, he's a salesman. He's you're a beggar. Put there to the forefront to push stuff. And then when it all fails, he just smoke and mirrors you to a different direction or something else and makes up an excuse or whatever. It's nonsense. The guy's a joke. I mean, why is Xbox right now, even though they have comparable hardware, to the PlayStation 5, why are they so far behind this console, Jen? Okay. Can you think of a reason to have an Xbox besides Game Pass? I mean... I mean... Game Pass is a great value. Yeah. I like the Xbox controller better than the PS5 controller. Uh -huh. But if all games are on both consoles, uh -huh. and PS5 has a few awesome exclusives, yep. why would you not want the PS5? Because you have it. Correct? Everything you have, I don't want. So, unless he can fucking figure out a reason to own his console, uh -huh. there will always be a downturn of console sales this this generation. I mean, it's his fault. <clears throat> is it I honestly don't know why people like him. So is it your fault you got snort sacks? Look at the snort sacks. Look at that from that angle. What do you think is inside those things? Do you think in Easter, he gets little, like, chocolate eggs come out of it? What do you think comes out of these snort sacks? Like, what the fuck is in that? Or is that just from, like, losing a lot of weight and it's, like, loose skin? Like, how can you have all... Or is that just, like, from drinking a lot? Fucking hell. So much. Why? Because he has a smile? Because he, you know, again, because he looks... 
<laughs> yeah, the smile. DSP hated on. Look at the hate. Look at that. That's what a real hater looks like. DSP hated on another man because he smiles. <laughs> like a friendly guy again because he looks like a, a friendly college guy who wants to hang out with you and play video games a friendly college guy <laughs> who he's talking about who the fuck is phil spencer by the way who is this person phil spencer this is the guy that dsp hates so much phil spencer is an american business executive and ceo of microsoft gaming this is the guy that dsp hates phil spencer he looks like a regular dude like what's wrong with phil spencer <laughs> A college guy because he smiles. <laughs> DSP hates this guy just for being a guy because he's a college guy. <laughs> he looks like he could be his dad. Actually, he kind of looks like he could be DSP's dad, isn't it? No? Doesn't Phil Spencer look like he could be DSP's dad a little bit? There's a little bit of like daddy there, no? Maybe it's daddy issues. Maybe it's daddy issues. He was in charge of, of Microsoft during the Xbox One era, and now the Xbox Series S and X era, when it's on a downturn. You understand? Yeah. He's not doing the right choices. He's not. He's not doing the right choices. He's doing all the wrong choices for Xbox. And it's... And what... Do you think he has some sort of thing going on in his mouth? What's, why is his mouth one side of his mouth like that? Is that, is that like um, cerebral palsy? What do you think is going on with his mouth? Why is, why is one side like this? He doesn't want his choices. What's going on with his mouth? Era when it's on a downturn. You understand? Or is it his teeth or gums or something? What's happened to his mouth? He's not doing the right choices. choices. He's not. He's not doing the right choices. He's choices. doing all the wrong choices. For all Xbox. the wrong choices. And it's sad because the hardware is good. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that console. I like playing games on it. There's a lot wrong with your face, though. Look at that. Fucking hell. Absolute jump scare. There's a lot wrong with your face, brother. God damn it. I'd literally like, I don't know what I'd do if I look like that. I swear to God, I'm just too vain and I care way too much about my appearance. I, I don't know what I'd do. I'd, I'd, I might go South Korea and just get my whole face reconstructed. Fuck it. Take all the money for the dents and just get my entire face fucking blitzkrieged. Do you know what I mean? Just get it fucking chopped and cut and shaved and added. Like, I'll just come out looking like chin like that. It's my chin. Hey, that's how to come out. What's good? What's good? You got any tips for me? I need tips and donations. That's how I'd come out. I'd, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it, bro. It's his fault. He doesn't know how to run the company. And it, the thing he just said there blows my mind. He says, so we want people to think of Xbox as the, the place to play all the good games, but it doesn't have to be a console. Then what the fuck is it, you idiot? What? <laughs> I love how he talks very spicy so much from his little snort for. What the fuck is it, you idiot? You fucking douchebag. Eat it. Eat it. You know, he took so spicy from his little snort fort. Look at him. Such a keyboard warrior. Look at him, DSV. What is it, you fucking idiot? <laughs> what is it? What are you talking about? Are you a third-party developer or are you a first-party company tough that has guy. a console that people want to play games on? You can't be a tough guy in the Henley as well, by the way. I don't care what your Henley looks like or where you bought it from. There's, you can't look like a tough guy wearing a fucking charcoal Henley that you bought in a fucking multi, yeah, multi-pack charcoal Henley. You've got a black one upstairs, a white one. Like You can't be tough in a multi-pack Henley. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't have it both ways. If you have it both ways, no one needs your console. You can't sell Xbox as a brand because the brand is the console. The brand. It's not a line of the games. Brand. Right? It does, what he says makes no fucking sense at all. He's an idiot. D DSP, the hate juice is in. Oh my god, he's drinking wheelchair. Donations. Donations. There's still something, this back here. here. Big up Snort Burnell. Big up Snort Burnell. I appreciate you. Check out Snort Burnell. DSP is a piece of shit. We know that's the case. We know that's the fucking case. Let's talk about Yuri. Yuri jumped on stream and is trying to defend himself against all the shit that's been happening lately, right? Um, just watch some Yuri videos. There's this one particular Yuri video I want to watch, courtesy of the No Jumper subreddit, and the title is as follows. Can you see this? Can you guys see this? It says, Yuri speaks on not being um, compensated fairly for all his hard work while he's at No Jumper. By the way, if you're not aware, Yuri went through some issues with his friend, girlfriend Riley. Moist Critical destroyed him. Everyone destroyed him. 
online for being a shitty boyfriend but now the new narrative is that um he's now fighting against this narrative that he was fired from no jumper which he obviously was fired from no jumper but um he's now saying he wasn't adam 22 made a video on no jumper news where he said he was fired for not doing for not being you know not doing great work and um here we are so we're gonna watch what yuri has to say about himself and try and defend himself from the stuff that Adam said, even though Adam was the one that fired him. He's now disputing the fact that he wasn't fired. He was actually a great worker. So let's see what Adam, well, let's see what Yuri has to say. Fire me. Adam hit me up saying, hey, Yuri, we kind of like don't want you doing this job anymore. We have like a bunch of other things for you to do. Like just do those things, right? And I, at that point, that's like, I had already like... That's like soft firing, isn't it? Isn't that like an... I don't know about you guys, but every workplace I've worked in, Whenever they start to take away responsibilities from you, it's usually a sign they're not happy with your level of performance. And usually it's a precursor for you either getting fired or getting moved to another department or them trying to pressure you to leave. But it's not a good sign when someone takes away responsibilities from you, especially if you haven't asked. If they decide, hey, we just, we're going to take it away without you suggesting or without you insisting, it's usually a bad sign that you're not doing a good job. But, you know, what do I know? Like, you know, this is the point where I had already asked for a raise and I realized like, oh shit, these fools, you know, aren't really, you know, <clears throat> going to compensate me fairly for my work. And I'm putting in hella work, hella hours here. And for that type of job, for the amount of hours I was putting in, I was getting paid kaputs, you know what I mean? So I was just like, it wasn't really uh, making sense to me at that point. Also, okay, it was kind of like a firing, but for every, I feel like we should just lay it out because yeah. I get- I love this old clip. So this is the old clip of, of Yuri on No Jumper. This is one thing you remember also seeing on Yuri on Jumper. He was always so excited whenever he spoke to around Adam, which is what, quite sad how it transpired. You really got the feeling Yuri kind of looked up to Adam 22. He kind of saw him as like a mentor, big brother type of figure. And obviously it kind of, you know, didn't end up the greatest. There is a rumor going around. I'm not sure if I believe it, but there is a rumor going around on the No Jumper subreddit. That, actually, I don't like how this text is so big. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to change this. This is fuck, fucking up my eyes. Bear with me one second as I can. I'm going to reset this transform because I don't like how this looks. I stretched it. And it looks fucking horrible. Let's just leave it looking the way it was before. Um, there's a rumor going around on the No, no Jumper subreddit that allegedly that says that Adam22 might have fucked Riley before Yuri. That's how they actually met. I'm not too sure if I believe it. If that is the case, that might explain why he's always got a bit of a bug, you know, in his fucking um he's always got a bug against fucking adam 22 there's always a bit of static going on there maybe but regardless weird situation to be in let's continue the video so do many it, of these messages it. all the time so we should just lay it out i was making mistakes on the clips titles right because i was doing the no drip clips and i'm very illiterate you also can't spell and i all. can't spell i'm illiterate all the i'm sorry but admitting that you're fucking up your job because you can't spell correctly on clip titles is quite embarrassing imagine getting fired from no jumper because you can't spell <laughs> you're not working at fucking harvard university you know what i mean you're not working at fucking Neuralink. you're working at fucking no jumper and you're getting fired for what your lack of spelling jesus christ bro the stuff because every every <laughs> all right this is every and also, how old is he? Like, wh what's up with the schools in the States? Why can't you guys spell? Why can't he spell at that age? Why is he struggling to spell? Like, what words are they going to use in No Jumper clip titles that are going to throw him off so much? What's going to really give him a And also, like, nowadays with modern fucking computers and auto, you know, auto correct and, and spell check and shit, how could you actually even misspell things in the first place? Every person who does the titles for the Clips channel knows that I write the titles mm -hmm. and I want them exactly how I wrote them. I don't want a fucking apostrophe moved one space over. I don't mm. want an additional space, etc. Laura does it now. Laura copies and pastes <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, why don't you just copy and I paste think it? In the, in, I think in the whole time Laura's been doing it and she copied and pasted, there, there might have been like one time where something was fucked up because she copied and pasted it wrong, whatever. Yuri, at a certain point, it was like every day he was getting the titles wrong. Bro, and I, they called me a, a pronoun because of this. Oh, my what God. What was that? I called you a girl accidentally. Yeah. Instead of a no, man it was like AD talks about how she felt. Yeah. Like, you know, they what? used the yeah, wrong that pronoun for AD. I'm like, bro, he's a Compton Crip. You can't be putting this smut on his I, I, I am a civilian. <laughs> exactly. Josh, Josh over here rolling his eyes. <laughs> yeah, why is Josh, hey, what's let Josh got to say? Let me tell you, a year ago, I was sitting here and I was like, you, you killing it, man. You're dope as hell. Josh, boom. Okay, 
I don't give a fuck about this. Let's 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 continue. Let's move on. Um, Yuri is there capping and trying to defend himself against how he got fired. There's actually a kick video. Let's watch actually his kick stream. Um, Yuri is actually on his kick stream trying to explain a little bit of the situation that happened with Riley. So let's watch a little bit of that and then we can continue on with some Brandon Schaub stuff, of course. Let's check out Yuri's kick stream via Harmonious Man Yuri Kick account. Styling and profiling dropped a bag of $2. First off, let's speak on why Brick was even talking. Bro cannot form a sentence off them perks. <laughs> I know, guys. Uh, though the people are talking about the break baby shit, chat. You think there's not there's no dudes out there that would desperately want to, you know, be with Riley? It ain't gonna happen, though. Unfortunately, they could try their hardest. It ain't gonna happen. There's a lot of people like that. They're like, oh, bro, I would love to be with your girl. I'm sure you would. Ain't gonna happen, though. In your fucking wife. What a weird thing to say. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of guys that want to fuck my girl. Like, why are you even thinking about that? <laughs> what a strange dude what a really strange dude he's thinking about all the guys out there that want to fuck his girl it's like i'm what well, i'm fucking her it's like okay congrats on it <laughs> you want a sticker <laughs> you want a pat on the back i'm having sex it's like good for you <laughs> wildest dreams bro pigs will fly before a flock blood do you be but just type hold on i'll replay i'll replay in a second my bad video is hold on hold on hold on hold on Great stream. <laughs> Great stream. Never Here you go, him. being controlling, bro. <laughs> Ask Riley, dude. Show a picture of Brick Baby to Riley, and she's gonna go. Pfft. She's gonna be like, bro, what? Let's be real though. Yuri and Riley, Yuri and Brick Baby aren't that far apart when it comes to looks. Let's be for real. I don't know why this guy's talking about. He's acting as if he's a stud or anything. Come on, let's relax. <laughs> AK dropped a bag of four dollars and ninety nine cents. Gang, did you ask if we? I got your back. Brotherly love. K flock blood do you eb but just type K flock and it will pop up. Make sure video the video is important to show how harmonious gang is riding for you. Can I put you in the middle, gang? Pause. Pause. Thank you so much, AK. I appreciate you. I'll play that song in a second. And then also, guys, um. You know, I talked about the whole situation with the video that has been going fucking viral viral and shit, mm -hmm. unfortunately, where I was not a great boyfriend, right? And obviously people are going to be... You're never a great boyfriend, Yuri. You are never a great boyfriend. You're just about a good human being. You sit online and basically panhandle for weed money. He's, he, he does the same trick every single time. Every time I tune in or I check out the No Jumper subreddit, he's doing a fucking, what's that thing called? He's doing a marathon thing. Oh, tip every minute and add a minute, add another hour onto my thing, 24-7, hence 24-7 fucking live stream. Every tip is another fucking minute, another hour. Like, when will this fucking shit end? When will it end? If he's not doing that, he's harassing fucking Bape Store employees. And nearly getting fucking swept by them. Like, come on, bro. You gotta grow up a bit. This kid's 30, allegedly. Come on. Be like bringing up other stuff with like, oh, Yuri's done other stuff on camera before. Guys, I'm. You've done a lot of stuff. We've, co we've covered it on my little tiny stream. You've done many, 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 many things. This guy has a catalog of offenses when it comes to being a terrible boyfriend. He might be legitimately the world champion of fucking terrible boyfriends he might actually win an award for it at the end of the year of how terrible of a boyfriend he is and he's quite lucky that he has a girlfriend who looks or who appears to be somewhat insecure somewhat codependent maybe they're just perfect for each other that's my theory i don't think the insecure and codependent thing is true i just think they're perfect for each other in a weird way um so that's why you can kind of get away we can kind of get away with but the way he treats her especially on stream which is in front of strangers in front of randoms because i don't know about you but the way i was brought up um you know i had parents who would sometimes go into the other room if they were going to argue or they would make sure to always present a united front in front of strangers but this guy goes out of his way to be a dickhead to be petty to wind up his girlfriend on stream and just embarrass her for no reason and you know there are occasions when she obviously presses his buttons like most girlfriends do but yuri should be the man and kind of lead and kind of just stop all the beef and chill but he doesn't he always bites he always tries to have the last word he always thinks he's right in you know he could never fucking de-escalate things 
it's just a fucking horrible situation to be in but he definitely will win the awards for the worst boyfriend of the year if not the decade not a perfect human being and guess what no none of you guys are no we, we didn't say we are this is isn't a, this is like an interesting gaslight thing isn't it none of us said we're perfect we just said you're a shitty boyfriend <laughs> that's all no one said they're perfect i don't think anyone out there is saying that they would do it much better like no one's no no sensible person is saying that they'd you know they'd be a um a far better boyfriend than you they're just saying from the evidence that they've seen online you're a shitty boyfriend and you appear to be a shitty person at times that's an okay observation it doesn't mean it's the whole of you but it does cover some of you that we've seen one thing for sure is the only people criticizing me to a point where they're just like you know hate me type shit are the people that don't really know me the people isn't that the whole point of the internet though don't people judge you based on the small bits of information that they see online about you that's the whole nature of like online commentary they're never gonna know you personally because they don't personally know you so how else would they form an opinion just based on the imp information or the content they have available. Yeah, I don't know what he's talking about here. People who actually watch my streams, who uh -huh. watch a lot of my streams and all that stuff. Um, so basically your fans. Um, who aren't like some weirdo trolls. So no trolls, no haters, only your fans. They all know my, you know, my personality. Personal Yo, big up NJ Ranger. Pissed at him for sullying tests with that incel bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Made that little babe feel bad for sitting next to a gay dude years ago. Also, I already watch and love Adam Friedland. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. NJ Ranger. I did not clock that. Yeah, he does look a bit like Adam Friedland, isn't it? I didn't realize that. That's a fucking real good little reference there. He actually does look like Adam, doesn't he? Shit. Well, to be fair... There's something about that look that girls like, innit? Maybe it's the Jewish thing because Dasha went out with Adam Friedland, innit? Dasha from Red Scare. So maybe there's something about that kind of look that girls just go dizzy for. So maybe, you know, maybe Yuri, despite looking like a bit of a freak, maybe he is Mr. Bitches. He's got that kind of like, you know, he's got that kind of, you know, he's got that Tel Aviv look about him, innit? <laughs> they know Riley, they know our relationship together and they all... Your relationship is you shout at her, you shout at her, you wind her up, you get in her head, and then you know, rinse and repeat. You know, have been messaging the both of us, telling us like you know, um, who are these people? It's easy to take like one thing from a person's relationship. It's not one thing though. There's a catalog of offenses. I could even play them for you if I was being really petty, but I'm not going to be that guy. But there's a catalog of offenses this guy's committed over the years that we've kind of watched him come on man relationship and then like show some crazy you know like and then get this crazy narrative out of it but then also like i said i i don't owe you guys an apology and i don't know most critical Ooh, an apology and i don't know anyone apology the only bad. person i owe he woke he woke up today and he ate his fucking oats isn't it right i don't owe you guys an apology i don't owe most critical an apology i ain't sorry for shit i'm doubling down <laughs> Tel Aviv boys, we up. <laughs> Owed an apology from the beginning was Riley, and we already talked about this, and we already had like got through it, and I already accepted my fault, and that was the only person um, I uh, owed an apology to, or you know, even had like uh, to conversate to. So all the people attacking me in my Instagram, all the people attacking me in the chat, or whatever it is, I don't care what you guys say. You know what I mean, like. Yeah, you do. You you do care what we say. Trust me, you care. Because he was having a nervous breakdown the other day. He was shaking. He was smoking weed all the time to calm his nerves. He was saying he was having anxiety. He couldn't breathe properly. He was going through it the other day. So don't act like you don't care. Don't act like you're a big boy now. Come on, man. Like, you guys aren't the people I faulted. You guys aren't people the people I wronged. You guys don't. Aren't you embarrassed, though? Aren't you like a tiny bit embarrassed by how you appeared online? Because it's one thing if you get mad at your girlfriend for something legitimate that she done, bad or wrong. You got mad at her for recording a video 10 years ago. <laughs> what a fucking dickhead. No, the either of us, you know what I mean? So I don't know you guys an apology. It's like if it's if I see fucking, you know, uh, 
specific people in the chat, then I'd be like, oh, okay, like I need to talk to this person. But no, it's like it's literally. Yo, big up far thick Nugan. Look at this homo. He's lost. Doesn't know who he is. He's completely lost. He's lost beyond lost. He is away somewhere else. He's gone. Um, Big Riley's the only person that matters in this whole situation. Oh, does she now? Maybe treat her like she matters, brother. Maybe don't, you know. Maybe don't treat her like shit on stream and off stream. Maybe that could help. Actions speak louder than words. And we've already, you know, kind of gone through it and settled it. And I know that's like, I'm kind of speaking for Riley right now because she personally would just prefer not to be on camera because... Or duh, because she got made to look like an absolute idiot by you. This is a lot to deal with. Um, and, you know, I respect her. You embarrassed her. You mocked her. You belittled her. Almost bullied her. You're pretty shitty thing that you did. So I'm not surprised she doesn't want to come on stream. I, uh, decision I feel like you guys should too people saying like oh bring it on camera she just doesn't want to deal with any of this bullshit I can't wait to the day we can go back to the chill streams again but um yeah I don't know anyone an apology other than Riley and like I said we've got through it and I admit I've I've you know um no. I've say say the word you admit that you're a shitty person and a shitty boyfriend you've done no work internally to correct that you're just gonna hope and pray it gets better over time but there's no guarantees that it will because you've got a catalogue of offences that have been documented online of your terrible behaviour to your girlfriend and you're only getting away with it because she's who she is and because you're who you are. But in any other circumstances, with any other person, they would have ran a mile because you're a walking red flag. Say it. Say it. I've been like a, a bad boyfriend and a bad person many, many Ooh, bad boy. times. And we both learned through it. You know what I mean? Like there's... <laughs> learning how to not to be a bad boyfriend step number one don't be a bad boyfriend like things that everyone does and also guys like here's the other i've never done that i've never screamed at a girl that i was with f for not telling me that she recorded a video with a gay guy and one of her other best friends 10 years ago i've never screamed at woman for doing that ever in my entire life i don't give a fuck other thing is like i said no one's a perfect human being and i know that's like just like a who said they were perfect? Don't guess like us. If anyone could say that whenever they like get caught doing something stupid or whatever. Yeah, it is, it's right? Like, like, it's no one's a perfect, like. hu perfect human being. Uh -huh. I would like, well, like everyone's, you know, what you mean, like? lowest moments to be captured on camera. No, so you want everyone lowest moments to be captured so that you can what excuse yourself from your shitty behavior? This guy is a real nincompoop, isn't it? And then get this many views, and then see what people say about you. You know what I mean? Well, is he showing off now? I bet you couldn't get any much views as I could if you made a mistake. Is he actually showing off? So it's like, just because this has gone viral and so many people are talking about it and posting about it. The Can you put viral in quotation marks when it actually has gone viral? Isn't that the opposite? Big up Theodore. Next time you are running late for a stream, make sure to pull a Yuri and say, I don't owe none of you shit. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to let my nuts hang, as 6 9 would say. I'm going to let my nuts hang at season. I don't know none of you niggas shit. All right? Y'all niggas don't know me. Y'all know where I'm from. Y'all know what I've been on. Y'all know where I've been, where I'm going, who I'm about to be. Huh? Fuck y'all. Who y'all think you are? You know, do my best American accent. Fuck y'all. Doesn't make me unique. Big up Theodore. Unique in the fact that this only happens to me. We've all made... No, it does only happen to you. I've never seen another person apart from you rage and crash out on your girlfriend the way that you do. Only you do that, Yuri. I swear, only you do that. You know, uh, terrible decisions or even like, you know, acted childish or acted petty or acted stupid or acted kind of like, you know, non-intelligent at some point in our lives. Maybe numerous... Big up Uche. <laughs> Right back at you, babes. Right back at you. We're all we're all in this fucking toxic stew. This toxic fucking stew. Right? This codependency toxic stew. <laughs> this times and don't act like what I'm gonna do without you. <laughs> You've just hit some point where you're like, I'm fully fucking woke now. You know, I'm I'm a monk. I'm never making mistakes. What the fuck is this guy talking about? What is the fuck is this dweeb? This fucking neek talking about? I'm fully woke. I'm not going to make it like, wait, like, how can you, bruh, just don't be a shitty boyfriend. It's not that hard. For the rest of my life, I'm drinking tea and, 
you know, meditating for the rest of my life. No, bro. We all make mistakes in life, especially the more shit that you do in life. It's like the more shit that you... The more shit that you... Do. So he, he's trying to make it seem like he only rags at his girlfriend on stream because what? He's hustling and he's trying to chase his dreams and fuck off. Fuck off. You interact with and do and the more variables there are, the more of a chance there is for you to be like, you know, make a wrong decision, decision, make a right decision. All right. Um... Sure. But regardless, like I said, to all the people who are saying abuser, whatever, blah blah, guys, I don't know. What do you mean blah blah? You are abusive. Abusive, blah blah. There's no blah blah. You are abusive. Oh, any of you guys, an apology, and I really don't care what you guys say. You're an abusive boyfriend. He's this. He's just. He... <laughs> nah, he's not. I'm not gonna go that far. What I care what, who, you know, um, the opinions I care of is like the people in our close circle and the people um and riley riley number one and the people in our, in our close circle if you cared about riley you wouldn't embarrass her the way you do online so much cool and it's like if if they're not telling me that or if riley's not telling me that then like and if that was the case guys it's like riley's like i'm not fucking r kelly over here bro riley's not chained downstairs riley can i don't even have a car bro riley has the car she can fucking just dip out of here whenever she wants bro you think I'm, like, holding her back? It's like, bro, no. It's like, there's literally nothing holding Riley back from leaving me whenever she wants. You know what I mean? It's like, uh... Yeah, but you know she won't. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're talking about. If, if, if we didn't get past real, you know, like, conflicts and real arguments and all that stuff, uh, we wouldn't be here right now. It would just, you know, it would literally, we would be separated. That's it. But anyways, you were holding her hostage. <laughs> Anyway, that's right. That's Yuri talking all that shit, trying to defend himself. I guess it is what it is. In essence, if he stopped being a shitty boyfriend, everything would be okay. He's incapable of doing that because he's incapable of acknowledging that he is a shitty boyfriend. The first step to changing your behavior is acknowledging your behavior and, you know, then doing the work necessary to kind of make sure it doesn't happen again. Is he going to do that? Possibly not because he's the way he is. It kind of is the way it fucking is moving on from that one let's talk about this so i'm sure some of you guys know do you guys remember scotty beam do you guys remember scotty beam this attractive young lady who was on um a podcast a show called oh i forgot the fucking name of it but regardless she was on the show with um joe budden back in the day and she was one of the people that was staunchly defending juicy smollett when the whole Juicy Smollett thing went down, she was defending him super hard and saying that he didn't lie and that he actually did get beat up by these white guy MAGA hat wearing dudes in the middle of the night during one of the coldest, you know, fucking seasons in fucking Chicago history, whatever. Actually, you know what happened? It transpired that Juicy Smollett was most likely lying and obviously he ended up getting charged for it, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, during the show that she did with Joe Budden, she was defending Juicy Smollett. Joe Budden was obviously calling out the lie from minute one, like, the rest of us on the internet were they butted heads they didn't get along to the point where joe ended up having to fire her from the show she ended up talking bad about him a few times and they haven't really been caught cool since anyway because all the diddy stuff is going down did joe has been one of the people in media who's been weirdly quiet about all the diddy stuff he didn't want to talk about it so i guess scotty beam took the news of diddy getting his house raided or his house is raided and decided to kind of dunk on Joe and remind people just, you know, what happened when she tried to defend Justice Smollett. So she decided to write this quote or this tweet, sorry, that says, LML, nigga was going to beat me up for not calling Jussie a, you know, bunch of sticks when we didn't have all the info. But Homeland Security at his homie's house and it's quiet. That's true. I think both people can be right. I think she can be right to call out Joe Budden for his hypocrisy and for his double standards and for being very hush hush and mute when the Diddy stuff went down and which is funny because if you listen to the latest episode of Joe Budden podcast you would have heard him actually throwing Diddy I won't say Diddy on the bus but really going out and saying hey it's over for Diddy when when it first happened he refused to talk about it he didn't want to you know put smut on Diddy's name he I, I guess with his silence he was trying to defend Diddy but now that the feds were at his house and raided him and shit I guess he's kind of now seen that most likely it's a rap for Diddy and he's now deciding to kick his back in while he's lying down which is obviously the way D D Joe Butter moves but I think Joe was also right to call out Scotty Beam at the time when just let shit happen just let shit happen it was obviously a fucking lie 
he was obviously trying to hoodwink people he was obviously trying to use the fact that he was obviously trying to you know have the, this whole victim thing going on to kind of propel his career and unfortunately it backfired because the lie was just too crazy just too obscene didn't make any sense and there's too many holes in it i don't think i've heard scotty beam say anything in terms of walking back that whole thing that happened with just smollett she hasn't said a single word i don't think so so you know it's one thing to say joe budden's not talking about diddy and it's quiet for you know all that situation but you also haven't really walked back the whole justice smollett stance she hasn't walked back and said you know what maybe i was wrong maybe i did kind of jump out the window too hard maybe i was being a little bit too aggressive maybe i was being a little bit too dismissive of other people's you know theories and suggestions and what kind of would have transpired because you know let it be known most people on the internet had the right theory when they kind of called out the lie from minute zero because i think even i was one of those people who kind of thought you know what maybe it's possible it happened i swear to god i might be one of the people i'm not, I'm not even going to stand here and kind of cap and say oh i knew from the beginning i thought it was a kind of a tragic story when i, I remember did hearing about it because i remember you know following just Smollett loosely from afar based on some of his shows he was on and always thinking you kind of came across really well in interviews and whatnot so when i heard the story you know it didn't really fill me with any kind of joy but i didn't know straight from the beginning that he was lying it actually was only until maybe a day or so later when some of the details had to come out that, you know, it started, to, it started to seem a bit fishy. It didn't seem to be one of those really believable stories. And then, of course, as time went on, we started to find out that, you know, of course, the two MAGA wearing white guys were actually two incredibly black looking guys from fucking Nigeria who were kind of, you know, um, brought in in this whole elaborate plan to get fucking Justice Mo Smollett more notoriety and fame. Anyway, she hasn't walked it back. She hasn't apologized. So I don't think she should sit here and start dunking on Joe when she hasn't done the same thing herself. So Joe decided to reply and clap back at some of her stuff that she said regarding him. Here's some of the comments that he made on the podcast. Let's quickly listen to what he said. Main concern. <laughs> I hate when y'all do that. <laughs> yeah, well, I want to go see what she looks like. I don't know what she looks like. Oh, she's a pretty girl. She's a pretty girl. To whom it may concern, man. Uh -huh. Or to Twitter slash X's HBCU uh -huh. black feminists uh -huh. live with my mom for most of my life. Uh -huh. Black real life experience, the ability to critically think, nuance, <laughs> context, or the ability to form Damn. an original thought. Ouch. That thing got away. Whoever that may apply to. I wonder if Joe has a. I wonder again. This is a really good clapback, but I wonder if Joe has a real issue with like women that do kind of talk back to him a little bit. Maybe he's so used to dating like very young, impressionable, impressionable Hispanic, <laughs> Latin, you know, women that maybe when he has a woman, you know, talk back to him or you know push back or disagree very you know vocally very you know forthrightly maybe he doesn't react the best with it maybe who knows out there i love him <laughs> big up young old vibes joe doesn't work well with men and women yeah exactly joe does joe, joe does just doesn't play well with others full stop black media calls black media to the carpet <laughs> Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Some of that was just foolishness. Why Why would I be expected to make a remark about anything puff-related two, three hours after it all transpired? That's foolishness. You know why they're saying that? Because you were mute when it first went down. Joe was avoiding the whole Puffy issue when it first went down as if him and Puffy were fucking friends in high school. I never understood that. Obviously, it was a it's a money thing and it's a clout thing, whatever. But the way Joe was like staying silent and staying solid about Diddy when they were never like close friends, they weren't even like colleagues really. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they were super close behind the scenes and we didn't know it. But Diddy, you know, I don't know. I don't get it really. Diddy saw something in him, maybe he wanted to use him for his benefit. But I, I don't know. I wouldn't say they were friends or anything. So I, did, I didn't even get why Joe was going so out of his way to defend him when they weren't even that cool. But hey, I could be wrong.
Didn't get that. And I think some of the bitterness from from Shorty comes from whatever transpired during our time at Revolt. But one, I fired you for all of those reasons. I love how he says that. He enjoys firing people, by the way. I think the one time that he does feel like a boss or a manager is when he's firing people. I don't actually think he feels like a boss or a manager when he's, you know, doing cool things or he's breaking the story or he's putting together a good piece of content. No, I think he actually feels more like a boss, more like a manager, more like a leader when he's firing. Probably not even hiring. He probably enjoys firing people. It kind of gives him a bit of a kick. You know, I'm the boss because probably in his entire life or maybe in his music career or whatever, you know, he was used to always being the one fired or being the one fired. Now he's in the position to do the firing, you know, big up fucking um, what's his face. Reasons that I just named and I'm, I'm sick of good black successful men getting their backs kicked in by regurgitative Twitter. Good sex. He's talking about himself. Imagine talking about yourself in that way. Good, successful. What? Are you okay? By you people that just read shit and say it, which was the downfall. Of read shit and saying it is a bad thing, by the way, nowadays. You can't just read shit and say it. You have to read shit, say it in your own words, flip it, reverse it, remix it. You can't just read shit and say it. At cool. the gig. Not only did I fire you, though, that show is non-existent. I'm no longer at Revolt uh -huh. or do anything Revolt related. Uh -huh. So that's just a weird thought that my name should come up as you're looking for people to address. That's all. It's just just odd. And whatever tension that existed because of your Jussie Smollett take, mm. it happened already and it's over with. Like, we should be past that. True. I don't speak on you in an ill manner. I would expect to not be spoken about in an ill manner, especially with all of those ex... Ooh, he doesn't like her, does he? He does not like her. There's a little bit of, like, spice included in this fucking conversation. He does not like her. Let's see the, the end bit of part two of this, and we can continue. He does not like this woman. Face and phone time that me and rest in peace Andre Harrell put in trying to figure out a way to further develop you or pull greatness out of you and we were just unable to and both of us are great so what the fuck do that say about you gotta chill a little bit of that as well both of us are great we couldn't get greatness out of you yo joe's ego is fucking crazy comparing himself to the late great andre harrell is also very very crazy but we let him move but you we just couldn't get it out that was me, mad times in there, early in the morning. Niggas don't never tell the full story. Trying to help you feel comfortable, trying to help you get thoughts out, trying to help you succeed at your job. Nepotism aside, a nepotism aside, you- We got fear though. This is reminiscent of AK's shout out mine Higgalil Boom speech. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we forgot about that. And uh, little Boom, man. How is that guy not in prison, man? Honestly, American, I don't know. Uh, to be fair, in the UK too, it's hard to fucking pr imprison someone for that, isn't it? But yeah, l fuck little boom. Fuck little boom. You've been putting... Big up for you, Appreciate you, bro. ...position plenty of times to succeed and make your voice impactful outside of a Twitter or X upload. Ouch. So he's calling her just famous on fucking X... Right? That's that's all she does. She's just famous for hot takes. Nothing else. Bloody hell, bro. There's this new crop of y'all out there mm. that never lived, never got any real life experience and can't talk through something because you just read it and that becomes the bulk of your brain. And that don't work in the content space sometimes. Furthermore, I refuse to have my back kicked in by somebody who couldn't walk in a fucking heel when we worked together. Love, that might have been some of your first time having your face beat with a good beat. <sighs> okay, I've got to leave it there. Joe's, Joe's too messy for me. As, as a man, I can't get with this. Like, insulting a woman because she can't walk in the hills and then insinuating that you're the first person that allowed her to get, like, hair and makeup done. Why is he so sassy? <laughs> as a man, why are you so bitchy? Why are you so petty? So fucking weird. 
I'm not with that. I can't. I can't rock with that personally. I can't do that. I can't do that. Joe's too sassy for me. It always reminded. Whenever I see clips of him, I'm always reminded why I stopped watching the show. I'm always reminded why I stopped watching the fucking show. So big up fucking Joe Budden. Big up um, Scotty Beam. Let them to you know. I, just go in your own way, e each of you. You're never going to be friends. You see the world differently. It kind of is what it is. Anyway, let's move on. Brendan Schaub has a new announcement to make. Brendan Schaub has a new announcement to make. Do you know what it is? Do you know what Brendan Schaub's new announcement to make is? He's on the cover of Street Trucks. Brendan Schaub's on the cover of Street Trucks. Look at this fucking cover. Brendan Schaub on the cover of Street Trucks. What an achievement. This is what we were all waiting for. When he decided to quit stand-up comedy, when he decided to wait, he went to spend more time with his family, this is what we were waiting for. We were waiting for him to be on the cover of Street Trucks, the premier street truck magazine. He's got the car that he's going to be giving away soon to a lucky winner, to a lucky user, to a lucky fan has now appeared on Street Trucks. This is what we were waiting for. You know, people told him it wasn't possible. People told him he wouldn't make it. People told him he was a failure. People told him it wasn't going to go well for him. But look at how he's turned things around. He's now on the cover of Street Trucks. Wow. Wow. Fucking wow. He's made it finally. And look at this eloquent caption. Sharing my love for trucks and cars has taken me to some wild places all in America. I never imagined all in America. Check out the latest Street Trucks magazine cover. This lightning project meant a lot. I'm going to give the car away. Connected with so many great people in the space. Thanks for the support. And he then lists all of his fucking sponsors or all of the people who he's now hoping to give him free shit because this post is going to get a lot of likes and shit. So he's going to use this post as a way to kind of negotiate to get loads of free shit. That's the only reason why he made this, by the way. It's a very clever way to get some free exposure and, of course, to list all the companies that you are working with, which just means buying stuff from them, and in the hopes, in the hopes that it's going to allow you to go and then be able to get more free shit or get free shit that you won't get before. But, Let's also be fair. Let's also be fair. I said it previously. I actually think the wrap of this car is actually quite nice. I'm not going to lie. I know for most of you guys, it's quite ugly. But again, being that I'm from the UK and I fucking love, um, you know, Range Rover Sports. Do you guys remember Range Rover Sports? Do you guys remember that one? Do you guys remember Range Rover Sports? Range Rover Sport in orange. Do you guys remember that? I've got two cars here and a Ford Focus ST in orange too. Do you guys remember those two cars? When I think of that car, I think of these particular cars that came out many, many years ago. I remember these when I was growing up, seeing these down in the streets from where I grew up and seeing some of the local fucking gangsters and hood rats were driving these things and I fucking loved them. The same way I loved this Range Rover Sport in orange. So when I see Brendan's car, how it's wrapped in that orange, I'm reminded of this era of Range Rover Sports that I've always fucking wanted. So I quite like it, I'm not going to lie. I do like the wrap. Um, I think it actually looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, it does actually look like it's got some character to it. Obviously, you know, he's going to give it away. He doesn't really push it too hard. He's probably not the best, you know, um, driver of it or whatever it may be. But let's be fair. It does look quite hard, no? Or am I being, or am I being crass here? What do you guys think? I actually fucking love it. I'm not going to lie. I think it looks fucking really, really cool. I love how it's got the fucking nice big bag, nice big uh, Ford badge here on the front of the grill. You got a black bonnet here as well going on. You got different types of um, what you call it wheels at the back here. Not too sure what that different alloy is at the back. I'm assuming that's some sort of is that a traction thing? Is that a weight thing to have like different tires or is that or different wheels? Sorry, or is that just a different or is that just a style thing? I'm not too sure, but I quite like that. The racing slicks thing is it race? Are they slicks? No, they're not slicks. I think the back are slicks, right? I'm not too sure. Either way, looks cool. What do you guys think about it? I quite like the color. The magazine cover is fucking redacted. Him being on the front of it is fucking redacted too. And it goes to show you how hungry these magazines are for a bit of clout and a bit of recognition because he's only been buying cars or being into kind of trucks for what, six months? And now suddenly he's done a fucking magazine. 
And again, I don't know if it's a legit magazine. It could be an online magazine. I don't really know. Let's see their Instagram account. Have they got any? Have they got a lot of followers? Or it's just like a small thing. Big up frack, frack, frick. Hey, ago. Far-fick. What do you feel about those immigrants? You're tied to us. How do you feel about unlimited immigrants just coming in and no one even checks who they are? Yeah, of course. They should. Why should people check who? Why should anyone check who anybody is? I think there should be open borders around the world. I think everybody should be able to go anywhere. I think we should abolish passports. I think we should abolish home ownership. Why should you own a home? It's so greedy. Why should you have a house for yourself? Why don't you share the house with the rest of the population? There's people outside who are covered in rain, covered in shit, covered in piss. Why can't they stay in your house? I don't believe in borders. I don't believe in passports. I don't believe in home ownership. I don't believe in bank accounts. I don't believe in private property. I don't believe even in privacy. I feel like we should be fucking and sucking in front of each other. I don't feel like we should we should all be having freak offs. We should be living in each other's homes. We should all be able to walk across the fucking ocean and go to somewhere if we want to go and live there without anybody telling us what we can't go there. That's what I think we should do. No open borders for everybody. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Let's pop off. Let's see some real shit. Let's see open borders everywhere. You know what I mean? I want to see some Chechnyans in Sweden, right? I want to see some Ethiopians in fucking Norway, right? That's what I want to see. I want to see how that mix goes down. I want to see how that mix goes down. But yeah, this is hilarious. Uh, big up, uh, Farfik. Appreciate you. Brendan on the cover of this magazine when he's just started to buy trucks recently is fucking hilarious. Um, but this will validate him and give him all the fucking bonus that he needs to keep on going with this shit. The title of the magazine says, The Number One Custom Car Infusion Magazine. The subtext here says Square Boy Interior plus Timzy, what TMI Cruiser um, installs, Brennan Shaw Boosted Blue Oval. Is there an interview with this? Can we see, is there like an interview that we can read or is it just these pictures? What's it say here? Let's see. Is there like an interview we can read or is it just some pictures that we can just check out? I'm curious to see. Ah, oh, I think it's a, it's a, you have to actually buy it. I think it's like an actual print magazine you actually actually purchase. New YouTube video, Street Trucks website. Okay, cool. I'm not going to bother with that. But I guess that's the case. I guess that is the case over there. So Brendan is out here on the cover of fucking truck magazines, flexing, being a fucking big boy. Let's check out some of the comments here from some of the fans and see what they think of Brendan Shaw being on the cover of the number one custom truck enthusiast magazine in the world, Street Trucks. And I mean Street Truck, Street Trucks. What's the first person says here? The thickest copy I've ever released. Um, okay, now I'm gonna need an autographic copy. Did they now? Sh- did they show the flip TRX truck? I love the fact that you're into trucks, man. It's so cool to see those silver door jams. What's a, what's a silver door jams? What's that? Uh, I guess it's that. Is that this? I don't know. Who cares a truck? Um, street truck. Get get out to a lucky dog race. Nothing better than the track. I like the color. Easy on the road. Baller. What's that? Baller bedlocks on the back, but you couldn't do the matching setup on the front. Come on. Okay, cool. Loads of car views that's liking it. Big up, Brendan. I quite like the rap. It actually looks quite decent. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Talking about Brendan and cars. Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Talking about Brendan and cars. Have you guys seen this? <laughs> have you guys seen this? Talking about Brendan Schaub and cars, have you seen this? The latest episode, or one latest episode of Schaub Show, if you zoom in on the back of where Brendan's sitting, look at the picture he's got. Brendan decided to frame the picture of him racing at like 20 miles per hour during that fucking, you know, mid 400 race. And you got that fucking shitty picture of him in that car framed in the back of his fucking Schaub Show studio. Can you imagine how redacted you have to be that you think that's a good thing to show off? that you were driving so slow you ended up being like second to last that's not something to brag about i'd want to forget about it i wouldn't even want to have any remembrance of it i delete the pictures i wouldn't check my instagram for like a week or two because i didn't want to see the fucking mint 400 in my algorithm anymore i'd be completely off i would not let this be something that i boast about that i talk about that's in my memory never ever 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 so the fact that they do or the fact that he does it's absolutely hilarious 
But it makes sense though, right? Because he's always like, you know, this is how he thinks, right? He's one of those type of people. He closes his eyes when he thinks, right? When he's mulling over an idea, thinking if he should fire Chin and send him to the fucking gulags like George. This is what he does. He closes his eyes and then he, and then he pictures himself in that doom buggy talking to fucking Donald Cerrone's back. But again, what do I know? What do I know? Absolutely nothing. You know, that's what I know. Absolutely nothing. Let's move on from that one. Let's play some clips that I've decided to upload on my fucking, fucking Streamlabs. Number one clip to talk about here. Do you guys know about the drama happening with Steven Crowder? So Not Gay Jared decided to pop out and announce or let the world know that Steven Crowder allegedly may have been abusive, may have been, you know, um, put him in a situation where he couldn't, you know, go through with some sort of lawsuit he had. Regardless of the situation, um, not, J not Gay Jared has finally broke his silence and told all of us what we all kind of basically knew that unfortunately Stephen Crowden allegedly creates a toxic work environment to the point where people have to leave so let's hear what Not Gay Jared has to say Boo. enough is enough this can't go on any longer and uh, as the famous saying goes sunlight is the best disinfectant uh -huh. so here we go I'm currently being legally abused and intimidated into silence by a former employer this has been going on for a while now, and it simply cannot live in darkness for another day. Uh, but I am asking for your help to fight back. Damn, bro. First, some context. Uh, in late October of 2023, to my surprise, I was served these papers. A cease and desist from my former employer. It threatened severe legal action in the form of a lawsuit and demanded I cease communications with my friends. What? The scare tactics uh, of cease and desist are generally to intimidate, isolate, and eventually devastate. Uh, like most cease and desist, it also demanded that I swiftly provide uh, them written certificate of my compliance. Brian Callen really knows how to pick them, doesn't he? Brian Callen really knows how to pick them, doesn't he? He really knows how to pick them. From Brendan to Crystalia to Steven Crowder, to Sam Tripoli. He has an impeccable record of picking some of the greatest people, some of the greatest guys to do content with, some of the greatest people to call brothers, to call his friends, to call his compadres, his peers. It's almost uncanny how many awesome people Brian Cannon has been associated with over his life and his career. Wow. Wow. I did not. In the same delivery, I was also served these papers. A Rule 202 petition for my uh, former employer. You can look that up on the wow, internet. Wow, Stephen Crowder's actually going for um, it, isn't it? These documents were filed with the county court of my... What the fuck does Not Gay Jared know about Stephen Crowder? That he's going this hard? Not Gay Jared must have some really damning information about Stephen Crowder that he would go this far to tie him up in all these fucking lawsuits and papers and like he must know some shit because I think Not, Not Gay Jared actually didn't he work out Crowder the longest he was one of the longest serving members that left didn't it maybe that's why maybe he actually knows where the bodies are buried metaphorically speaking of course maybe that's why Stephen Crowder is so nervous or apprehensive about getting him gagged essentially former uh, place of employment demanding that I be subject to an oral deposition under oath for an unlimited amount of time where they were free to interrogate me on pretty much any private matter that they chose. Also in this petition for discovery, they demanded that I turn over documents uh, of all communications with more than a dozen of my friends and unlimited amount of unnamed persons uh, in any form and over an unlimited period of time. Could they actually do that? Make you hand over correspondence with your own friends what the fuck is that about i did not now i did not for a few reasons uh number one i have seen how this employer handles legal issues and i i knew that once i opened the door to legal abuse it would never ever be shut exactly. this is how they operate in exactly. fact um i'm not the only one uh, who's a current victim 
my former employer is exploiting the legal system uh, to abuse others right now. I wonder if tough guy Callan, you know, tough guy Callan, the one that's always spreading his legs, the one that's always talking about, you know, he's always like man, you know, mansplaining or whatever he does. He's always fucking out here talking the big fight, talking about what men should be doing or what women should be doing, whatever the answer is. I wonder, I wonder if tough guy Brian Callan, man's man Brian Callan, will actually have anything to say about this or will he just pretend it never happened? I wonder. All in the darkness, fully knowing that the fear and risks it takes to speak up. Uh, this kind of harassment at the hands of the powerful isn't just designed to financially ruin somebody. It's designed to cripple their soul. Now, I wasn't about to put uh, my family mm. on a embarking upon a journey down that road. Number two, I was not about to allow the privacy of my personal life, the trust uh, I have with my friends and the real, real relationships I have with them to be violated in such an evicted, vindictive and abusive manner. Good boy. Simply was not going to happen. Good boy. Um, I received the latest article of legal harassment on Friday, March 22nd, 2024. After a month now of litigation, exhausting even the court with relentless amendments to their Rule 202 petition, my ex-employer was finally awarded their request for my oral deposition and any document or communication with my friends that they believe may provide any avenue to sue me or others. As it stands, uh, they await my forced cooperation. Jesus Christ. I will not. I will continue to fight. Good boy. Uh, now, here's the big question, is what was their entire reason for this harassment uh -huh. and the basis for their claims? Yeah, I want to know that. These documents. An NDA. Some more context. Anyway, you get the gist. Nogue Jared is upset that um, Stephen Crowder is tying him up in litigation, trying him up in lawsuits, not allowing him to move on with his career, not allowing him moving on with his life to the point where it feels like, you know, he's purposely trying to bankrupt him so he doesn't have to fucking, you know, have him be out here talking all that mess and divulging secrets that he probably would not like people to kind of know about because the more he's actively trying to hide it, the more serious it becomes. If you just would have let it, you know, slip or whatever it may be or let it roll out during the whole hate train of him and going on in the first place, it would have been over now. But the fact that he just like, keeps hiding it, he's trying to suppress it, it's going to kick, kick the algorithm one minute, one way or the other, and people are going to exactly find out how much of a piece of shit he is. But I'm not going to lie. I'm I'm still surprised that he's that much of a piece of shit to his own staff. I always assumed he was a cunt anyway, but I never assumed he would be like that off camera. It seems like he doesn't have any off switch. It seems like he's on consistently. What you see, you know, in front of a camera, for better or worse, is probably the same thing that you get when you're in person with um, Stephen Crowder, which probably explains why people fall out of him so often because, you know, that persona on stream, there's only certain people that can fucking handle that day to day, you know, and I'm not one of those people. So I can definitely understand why this guy is feeling a little bit aggrieved and why he's not the most happy, chappy guy in the flipping world when it comes to all this shit but again what do i know what do i know what do i know moving on from that one we've also got this clip here courtesy of um msnbc which features the one and only Torre talking about diddy's sex scandal thing let's quickly check that out because i think this is an interesting video to check out because he does mention something that happened to one of his um family members regarding diddy Let's actually react to that now. I think this might be a good one to check out. I think this might be a good one to check out. Yesterday, federal agents executed search warrants at two properties in Los Angeles and Miami belonging to rap mogul Sean Diddy Combs. A source familiar with the matter told NBC News that Combs is the subject of a federal investigation following a wave of lawsuits okay. that have been filed against him. Uh -huh. Those lawsuits, including from his former girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, alleged physical and sexual abuse, Jesus which Christ. Combs has denied. God the source also confirmed that three women and a man have been interviewed by federal officials in mm -hmm. Manhattan in relation to allegations of sex trafficking, sexual assault, Jesus. and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms. Fuck Late today, Combs' lawyer issued the following statement. 
Quote, yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs residences. There was no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. This, this unprecedented ambush, paired with an advanced coordinated media presence, leads to a premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a premature rush to judgment. This fucking lawyer is legendary. Witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits. There's been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. I Unquote. Joining me now is Tore, host of Masters of the Game. The new season premieres Friday on the Grio. Uh, what is going on? Because we did also see uh, Diddy's sons arrested. They were detained. They weren't the arrested. Thing. They were just detained. Yeah. But what is going on? Yeah, well, it, it seems that there are... Let's see what Torre has to say. Let's see what Torre has to say. What is actually going on, Torre? Tell us the fucking juicy information we want to know. Several people who are saying things about Combs to the government, and they are trying to figure out what's going on. I found it interesting that they had enough to get a search warrant, right, uh -huh. for multiple places, but not enough yet to arrest him. So we're in the investigation phase, and clearly they don't care right. if we let him know what that we know what's going on. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it seems part of uh, part of his whole life, his whole journey has been this yeah. sort of scorched earth campaign where you see him continuing to succeed or do big things and leave people in his wake hurt. Yeah. We go back to CCNY, mm -hmm. which he a, a party that he over promoted that people yes. ended up getting killed. You think about the many artists who either left, you know, in complaint or went to the church or, you know, died nice. after, like, you know, I mean, there was a lot of dis a lot of disheartened artists who left him yeah. that he raised up Shine. And, uh, on and on. Um, and now this, this large, growing number of people who are alleging Wale. crazy stuff yes. about Kid him. Cuddy. Yeah. And these are things that people in Drake. the industry have been hearing about. It's over giving time. R. Kelly to Ray. It's giving, it's, 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 it's. Ew. Disturbing. You know. Who's this woman? How are you saying it's giving on MSNBC? Is that what your news presenters do now in America? Get on, get on fucking tv with a blonde bob with a blonde bob wig and say it's giving come on man be professional it's giving it's very r kelly coded like what <laughs> I, I was personally disturbed many years ago okay i i I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. Oh, really? And okay. this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I this is what nepotism looks like, by the way. This is what nepotism looks like. You try to get somebody a job at fucking Diddy's label or whatever. Try to get him an internship. And what happened? Did, did, he, did he try to fuck your sister or something? I and he said yes, and they were flying around. One of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. Okay. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What? Do you, wow. Why did it end? They wouldn't say. And years later, yeah, they well, finally been... came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said come home, stay the night with me, what? or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely. Yo, did he's out here fucking interns? Did he's out here fucking interns? Tory recommended interns. Absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. <laughs> and the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like, oh, this is this is time. how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so to hear that things went even further with potentially allegedly many other people yeah it, it, it's it's not i don't it, you know we we feel like we've seen this coming well we, there was the situation that's the thing i want to know by the way you guys in the stream chat is i was thinking about this earlier today is it possible to be a freaky guy like diddy without abusing people without harassing people without pressuring people without raping people can it be possible 
can you be as horny and as freaky as Diddy without the rape, grape and without the assault and without the harassment? It's not possible, is it? It's just a bit too dark. There's probably too much drugs involved, too much drink. It's late at night, too many cloud chasers. It's almost impossible to be that party guy who actually really legitimately parties, right? Take that, take that, take that. Can you actually be that guy, you know, and then also not be a dickhead? I don't think it's possible. I really don't. Diddy's obviously proved it. Um, but I think with Diddy thing as well, you have to remember, like, he, he flew too close to the sun. He just did too much. He did way too much. That's probably the issue at hand. Situation with obviously Russell Simmons, who does not live in the United States any further. Mm -hmm. You've got you've had these situations, obviously, with R. Kelly. <laughs> Russell and this feels like it is going down that kind of a track because you have multiple accusers with nothing proved. He's not been adjudicated a, you know, whatever. But it, it's just she's talking video. And he paid Cassie a lot of money. A, a lot. Some people are saying some people are hypothesizing. That did use a type where he would literally off himself. That's what some people are saying. Some people are saying they definitely would reckon he would definitely off himself. He's not in a good place. I remember someone saying that. A lot of money. And, that, you know, the, the people are coming with videos, though. I mean, like, evidence. Uh, Jared Merrick, um, Russell Simmons lives in Bali, allegedly now. He's in Bali. Not just hearsay. So, I mean, this is a very... <laughs> Very frightening situation. There was a period in the record business when a lot of wildness was going on yeah. of this sort. And uh -huh. here's another shoe dropping. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I think, talk about where he's at. Because what anyway, like I said, I would, I, I want to see how this transpires. I'm still not sure you could be that much of a freak and not be into some fuck shit. I think it's almost impossible. Um, but yeah, he just did too much. He wanted everything. He got absolutely nothing. He wanted everything and then he ended up getting absolutely fuck all. What an absolute horror show. What an absolute fucking horror show. Moving on from list. Moving on from that. Let's go on to some other bits and bobs. Um, let's see this quicker courtesy of the Fire and the Kids subreddit regarding the Vulcan Gas Company. A club also known as a stepmothership, also known as a fathership now. It looks like they have a new residency now. That residency that Brendan and Brian were doing, which they forgot, which they obviously killed because after two shows or after one show and um, the second show got cancelled. And now it looks like Vulcan Gas Company has moved on and decided to hire um, the one and only D David Lucas, um, Cameron Peterson and Hans Kim. So something's definitely happened. Something has definitely happened in terms of the Fire and the Kids sub. Well, like the residency thing. So residency was like one hit wonder, right? Which is obviously the opposite of residency. I know some residencies do exist where it's yearly, but mostly it's like every other month, every other week and shit. The fact that, you know, she got one one gig in that week and that was it. I don't think that's a good sign. But yeah, the residency being cancelled and then being replaced by David Lucas, who if you're not familiar with your law, you know David Lucas got his stuff from, he got his stuff from Brendan. Brendan actually told David Lucas to do stand-up and that's how he got us to do stand-up. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, imagine being replaced by these guys. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely freaking crazy. But again, what can you do? What can you do? Moving on from that one. You know Let's talk about this. This is a good one. Isn't it? Let's see you see this clip. I appreciate how Brendan explained to Sammy <laughs> fucking Gavano how fun it is to be in the mafia. This is a legendary clip, by the way. I'm, I'm glad somebody definitely clipped this. This was a legendary clip. They got Sammy Gavano on the fucking pod and, the, and Brennan decided to lecture him about how gangs work and kind of talk back and push back on certain things. It was quite funny to see. I'm not going to lie. Let's watch this little bit of this clip here. You don't, you don't miss the life? Yeah, because before you answer that, I was going to say, like, you know, a lot of people talk about the downfall of the Gambino crime before family, all that stuff. That. To me, in, in the movies too, like, whether it's Goodfellas, Casino, I don't watch it to the end. I like the beginning. Blow, I like the beginning. Like when you guys, it had been so fun. I think you guys in like that rape, in your, the social club there and just doing your thing. You guys are in suits. And then I was. <laughs> it must have. I don't watch the end of the movie. I just watched the beginning. What a redact. 
I don't finish movies. I just watch the start and then I just leave it. Which wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. Knowing Brendan's attention span, knowing how much he's on his phone, texting baddies for some addies, it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me. It would not surprise me if he watches movies and just turns it off after 10 minutes. It wouldn't surprise me. Your podcast, and you're talking about one time you and John Gotti went to this restaurant or bar, and there's girls there, and John sends you over to pick up the girls. They're pretty girls. Mm. You go over to them, but... Jesus, why... It's, wh when Brendan asks a question, he loves to do this thing where he just like talks for ages and then he figures out the question is that long, you know, along the way. But what kind of question is this? Their dads or somewhere in another crime family. So they're like, we can't do this, John. And it's like, I, I mean, obviously you guys weren't short on girls and people that liked you because it's so much power. I bet it was so fun, man. What kind of question was that? That's like 40 minute monologue. That was mostly about talking about himself or talking to himself or entertaining himself and not the actual owner of the flipping coat. What an absolute horror show. God damn, what an horror show. What's an absolute horror show? I absolutely love it though. I fucking love it. Look again. Look at that extra chromosome. I missed this bap this version of Papa. Look at that extra chromosome. Look at that. Look at that extra bit of paint all the HGH he's been taking. He doesn't get as much as anymore. But yeah, that was a funny clip. Legendary, legendary, legendary clip there of Sammy Garvano sitting there trying to remind himself why he's even on this we pod. You know what I mean? Originally oh, no. oh, 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 oh. Let's continue. Sorry about that. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. If you're liking the stream, you like what you see, you see what you like, please make sure you like the like button or you smash the like button down below. Um, give me some appreciation. Give me some love. Make sure other people can see the stream also by liking the stream down below. Helps with engagement. All of that blood clot shit. All of that blood clot shit. Let's watch this, by the way. Brendan and Brian arguing over Kanye West. Do you guys want to see Brendan and Brian arguing over Kanye West? Of course you want to see Brendan Schaub and Brian Kanye argue over Kanye West and his wife. I will dress up for Beetlejuice. Wait, can we go to why Kanye West, what is he doing with his wife? He's just parading around <sighs> in like room. What is he doing with his wife? Brian Callen talking about another man's wife, considering that he's been married twice, is hilarious. And Brian Callen also having a problem with how another man, you know, um, treats his wife. Considering he's been, a, you know, accused of rape and actual and and other litany of sexual assault harassment suits, it's quite funny. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got to mind your business. Sometimes you got to mind your business. What is the latest stuff, outfit? She just so walks around nuts. half naked all the time. Oh, is, is it too loud? My bad. Sorry, 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 guys. Sorry, guys. Too loud. Too loud. I'm sorry. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. I apologize. Like, is they, like what is he doing but uh, people are i'm mean, fans are saying that he's controlling her in that way but she might just want to just do that you know whatever oh yeah it's a girl we've never heard of and then now she's famous as fuck exactly, also yeah. if also, if your girl has that body for marketing we're so, all talking yeah. about it it's brilliant if your guy if your girl has that body how much has he been drooling over fucking bianca sensori's body eh if your girl has that body by the way um let's just put this out there bianca sensori has been wearing or has been dressing like that before she met Ye. That's her style. She enjoys wearing clothes in that fashion. And if I'm not mistaken, she has a completely different styling team to what um, Ye has. I think it's a couple or a duo that styles Bianca Sensori, um, Kanye West's wife. So it's not as if like Ye is the one that's picking out her clothes. Do you know what I mean? She enjoys wearing that shit. Like, well, what do you want her to do? She's married to one of the richest men in the world. She doesn't have to work. I think a lot of fashion... A lot of what we wear is almost dependent on what we actually do as a job. Because if you had a job where you didn't need to like get messy or whatever maybe, or you could be a little bit free and loose and you lived in a nice place all over the world, you could get away with a lot more things than regular person going on their nine and fives could get away with. Do you know what I mean? But anyway, let's let's hear what Brendan and Brian have to say about the fashion of Bianca Sensori, Yeezy, Kanye West, all that good stuff. Let's see what they say here. Yeah. Like that's it. You noticed it. Yeah. If but, you just did a cover with him with a gold grill, like new Kanye West, you don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's but brilliant. But, but brilliant. What do you mean? Why did, why did you do it with the gold grill, by the way? Because he's black. Why would Kanye West have a cover of an album where he's got a gold grill on? Huh? Brilliant. We're all talking about marketing wise. That's what he does. Wait, so what do you want me to look at? Brilliant. 
just because we're talking about it doesn't mean it's just it's it's, it's so you know like, so you know it's anti-semitism and all that i love stuff. that i love brian i love brian pushing back at brendan for once just because he's brilliant just doesn't mean just because it's, it's it's marketing doesn't mean it's brilliant let's one more time about that that was good we don't usually see that but that was some good pushback there from brian brilliant what do you mean brilliant Hold on, let's go back and yeah. about it it's brilliant yeah like that's it you noticed it yeah, if but, you just did a cover with him with a gold grill, like new Kanye West, you don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's but it's brilliant. But, but brilliant, what do you mean brilliant? We're all talking about marketing wise. That's what he does. Wait, so what do you want me to look brilliant. at? Brian? Just because we're talking. That's that's Brian's life, by the way. That's Brendan's life. Brendan's life of marketing or Brendan's philosophy of marketing is that let's just get everyone talking about me, ne not about what message you're trying to push out. You know, nothing. It's all about let's get this out in public to make sure people can fucking purchase this. That's all it is. That's his. That's what marketing means to Brendan. Who's talking about it? How viral is it? Blah blah blah. Come on. Talking about it doesn't mean it's just it's it's. it's so you know, like, so you know, it's anti-Semitism and all that stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. He has the stuff. number one album in the world. Yeah, but that's not that's not a thing to be. That's not good. That he has number one album. Is Brian Callen Jewish, by the way? It maybe Brian Callen's got some deep. You know, Israeli roots. That's why he's going so hard in the paint. <laughs> Maybe. No, it's not good. It's not good that he knows how to trend by being anti-Semitic or that he's... I'm not saying it is. He uses people like his wife it is. to do that. I'm, I'm Don't you use people like Joe Rogan? Didn't you use people like Rogan to get your career where you wanted to get it? Come on, man. I'm just saying it's working. But, but, but working in what sense? What do you mean working? He's a billionaire. That doesn't mean shit, Brendan. That, but he's, that he's making no, money. No, it means nothing. It means zero. It is. It is. On, it is Brian. like saying well, just on, because Brian. something works on, doesn't mean it should be like in any way, in any way applauded. It's bullshit. Behavior. I'm not applauding it, and it's a classic I'm, example I, hold on, of what's hold wrong on. with our culture. I'm not applauding it, but I'm for if you're Kanye West's manager, you're not gonna say hey. Hold on. How does he say Kanye West? How does Brendan say Kanye West? Kenye. How do you say his name? It's bullshit. Behavior. I'm not applauding it, and it's a classic I'm, example I, hold on, of what's hold wrong on. with our culture. I'm not applauding it, but I'm for if you're big up Assad. Appreciate you. Can't wait for Lil Brow's anti-Semitic album rollout. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna smash it. He actually might ironically do that well because you know that hatred is deep seated. So he must have some real bars in the tuck, ready to fucking let go. You know, ready to let go. Big up fucking Assad. Big up fucking Assad and hopefully little brow comes with some content we can react to. Come on, you dick. Play. Kanye West manager, you're not gonna say, hey, don't oh, do this. Jesus Christ. Right? Well well, okay. I could give a fuck about what a manager says. I mean th these are not criteria for how to live a life, a good life, in my opinion. I think it's just fucking it's literally worshiping the wrong things. I agree it's not you. good, but I bring I, up his wife. Let me see what he's what the latest outfit is. I just saw this thing on. Like What's a, her name? Bianca something? Or? Yeah, I, I think I think the the, the, the biggest he's off issue Instagram, is that he's like though. an unsupportive is, is highlighting out all of our. It just yeah, goes back just to everything that bums me out about my culture. I mean, shows what bums you about your culture, your Filipino culture, your Afghanistan culture, your British culture. What is your culture? Please tell us. We'd love to know. There's a lot of ass and stuff too. Like there's yeah, this she's ass. Now she's a looker. I'll tell you that much. Your image. I she don't... is a looker. Yeah, it wouldn't work if she was a war. I farfic. I promise you, farfic. I promise you, farfic. I promise you, this show was good. It didn't last long. I'm not saying it was good for like four years, but I promise you, there was a short period of time where the fire and the kid was actually quite funny. It right at the beginning. Right at the beginning, it was quite funny. I promise you it was. I promise you it was. It fell off really fast, and then they got another Rogan bump, and then, you know, whatever else transpired with the Fire and the Kid and stuff. But I really do believe the Fire and the Kid was insanely funny at one point. It really fucking was. It really fucking was. Warlock. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a but fan. But that's not attractive. Oh, shut uh, up, son. You think? No. Uh, who said that? Don't get me wrong. She's she's a she's a pretty girl herself, Sanaz. But come on, bro. Style is subjective, isn't it? Fashion is subjective. Like, let's relax a little bit. Isn't it? Let's relax a little bit. Sloppy. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. Well. No, I, I mean, I, I, I think it, he's just a very strange guy. I, she's literally this strange fashion piece. And I also that, like how Brendan has nothing to say. You know, when Brendan has, when Brendan doesn't want to make a mistake, he doesn't want to get fucked up and get clipped up. He's keeping completely quiet. He hasn't said a single word. No matter, no matter what, no matter the clap, nothing. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Interesting. That he is, uh, like, yeah. like he's dressing her. It's yeah. like a doll. It's like an people art saying, piece but he's parading what, around. But if she wants to her. do it, if she's like, you know, down to do it, then it's up well, to her. I, you know, she's an adult, right? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. That's a, that's yeah. a hell of a booty. And boobs. Like yeah. everything. Yeah. And she looks just like Kim Kardashian, which is also kind of weird. Well, maybe better. Well, I mean, very similar. Let's relax. Yeah. Let's relax. Yeah. Definitely similar. I think they're very different in their, in their looks. Person. Yeah. But I could be wrong. I don't approve. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, Guess what we don't approve of you, Brian? Allegedly graping somebody. We don't approve of that either. And keeping it hush-hush for all this time. I don't approve of that in the slightest. So I don't approve off started. Let's continue. It just bums me. It bums me out that he's a. It just bums me out that sometimes I look at American culture and I think of. I say um, the American lost. I just yeah. do. I, maybe it's, okay. it's maybe it's just bums cool me name. out that we no worship name. the wrong things. Who who else do you have an issue with? Um, I have an issue with spectacle, and I have an issue with uh, getting attention. I have an issue with a culture that rewards you for f f doing anything to get the lens on you. You're talking about Brendan. You're talking about so whatever Brad. you say, you can violate all the standards of common decency, That's whether Brendan. it's sportsmanship, sure. whatever, and you get the attention and you make a lot of money. Uh -huh. I don't think that's a reason to do anything. I, Just because I, I think I think with Con Connie's a little bit because he's been relevant for 20 years and his music's so good. Yeah, like he's so talented. That's right. That's why he can get away with it. If his music was trash, this doesn't work. Yeah, good point. Good point. But good because point. he's good so point, good Brendan. at this, it's like Sean Great Strickland. Point, some Brendan. of the stuff he says. Whether you agree with it or not, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty rough. But he was a world champion, so you're gonna put up with it. With Kanye, it's me. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about there. Anyway, that was it. Kanye um talk regarding or Kanye talk, most of it centered around Bianca Sensori. Both of these guys had all right points, I guess, for the for the sake of it. But the take real takeaway from this is, as most people are aware, because I mentioned it. Yo, big up Keith T, I appreciate you. The fighter and the kid was funny when Brian took the lead and Bapa was shy. When Bapa made himself the center of attention, it became unwatchable. Oh, that's a good point, actually. That's a fucking really good point. I never thought about that, actually. Pick up Keith T. I was actually trying to pinpoint the time when T Fat K did go to shit. And that's a very good shout. That's a very good shout because the early episodes, Brian was a little bit more of the A mic. Do you remember that? Fucking great point, Keith T. Very great point. Yeah, Brian was a bit more of the A Mac, A Mike. Sorry, he was the one that was sometimes introducing segments, wrapping segments up and shit. But maybe it was after all the like you know, um, all of the Friday. What, what was that thing called? The Friday editions things I, I was meant to pick out in you know, to read and shit. But yeah, that's that's a really fucking good point. That's a really fucking good point. Um, I like it. What else goes on at home though? Big up, NJ Ranger. Leave it to Rinks to take a decent, if chauvinistic take and ruin it by turning it into this is the downfall of the West. Never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity. Exactly, 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 Ranger, Ranger, exactly. That's Rinks for you, man. That's Rinks for you. He's probably still very insecure about not making his dad happy, so he subjects us to those fucking stupid, you know, lectures that he should be maybe giving in a college somewhere. It's fucking annoying. And also, this hat. This hat, as a grown man, Probably as bad as the forty first birthday balloons. This hat he has on there. Wearing that as a grown ass man is fucking G A Y. Go fast die da, don't die, you know. What? what do, like, who cares? Look at him. Look at that. Look at this look at the size of him. Look at that. God almighty. Let's just let, actually let, let's finish this clip. Music's so good, so massive. He's been around for twenty years dominating the charts they're putting up with it yeah whatever good boy fuck bro. all that anti-semitism fuck all yeah, that yeah it's not it's, good it's, no it's, no <laughs> israel brian brian standing up for israel is fucking hilarious brian netanyahu 
Brian Netanyahu. Oh, it's important. It's, it's not good, not, but if that's their goal not, to make not, more it's money. It's so not inspiring to me. For you, for sure. His music, yeah, he's really... What, what is inspiring to you? Let, tell us something you're inspired by, Brian, please. He was really good, really good at music. Like he's got, he's 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 a musical genius, and people say, yeah. Some say the best of all. Time. Sometimes he's just, yeah. you know, sometimes weirdos and artists like that do yeah, other he's shit. He's out there. Okay. Dali was uh, Salvador Dali was a okay. ghastly human being. History lesson from Brian Callen. No, thank you. We're gonna skip that. Let's move on. Um, no history lessons from Brian Callen. I fucking will rather throw myself out of a window than hear him talk about fucking Salvador Dali, uh, Afghanistan. Pakistan, like get fucked. Anyway, next one. Um, intern hangs chin out to dry. Let's see this. One. This is actually quite good. I don't, I don't mind this one. He had ordered sprinkled chin cupcakes. Oh god, the, the sound's still so fucking high. Apologies if I blew your ears out. I need to fucking adjust this sound all the time. Sorry, 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 sorry. We originally oh, no. had ordered sprinkled chin cupcakes. Brad put his bag. Just I'll no, tell you. This. We originally ordered Susie cakes, yep. but then yesterday with everything kind of flipping, I had to call them and be like, hey, you know, we have to put the order on hold. And then I tried to get them this morning, but they don't open until 11. So Chin is like. Yo, big up Theodore. It's very likely Brian's father is trying to buy up some Israeli settlement yeah. land as he says that. <laughs> exactly. 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 Exactly, Theodore. That's probably why he said that. He's been promised like. A massive multi multi multiplex, isn't it? Yeah, you're fucking right. Wow, that's fucking a good point. It really is. I love it. Let's see, Easter. Big up her field, though. Appreciate you. Can you go to a 7 Eleven? And I'm like, 7 <laughs> Eleven? Chip. That's what you think of me, Chip. No, this <laughs> is why you didn't come to the birthday. Emer what, what are we doing here? What are we imagine, imagine, imagine being Chin and being Asian and then being okay with sending the, your boss. A fucking, you know, Sainsbury's cake. A 7 Eleven cake. Can you imagine? Can you imagine being chin and being okay eating a, a cake from a petrol station? Or, you know, Sainsbury's not, pep well, I guess 7 Elevens aren't the technically petrol stations, but you get what I mean. God almighty. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? What are we fucking doing here? What are we fucking doing here yeah um let's continue here are we placed already right i think we paid adam sandler free yeah i think we did right do we place already adam sandler free comedian impressions we did right yeah probably did and i think is that yeah have i done all the my clips i can't done all my clips i can't have done all my clips let me double check them i've done all my clips i'm meant to download let me go on my stream more quickly. Again, if you're watching the show, you're enjoying what you see, please make sure you like it. That would be greatly appreciated. I do appreciate all of you that are tuning in right now. Let's see if I've got my fucking um, clips up on my stream book because this is weird. Have I done everything? No, have I done anything? Huh. Huh. Okay, I guess I have done. Oh, no, um... Tossy Gubbard is on it. She was on fucking or Tossy Gabbard Gubbard. Tossy Gubbard was on T Fat K as well. So that needs to be done. We were supposed also. to let's 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 see this one. Watch which else is that. Let's see this one. Way to kill the mood, Brendan. Let's see this. Co co headline maybe something in Tampa. Oh yeah, we but your do that fucking again. agent said no good. Your agent said told my agent, hey listen, Theo will sell three hundred <laughs> times the tickets. Chris will, so they're not co headline. Did he really? <laughs> I said fucking respect. I said respect to you, but I, but I Chet Hanks. Him. I said you keep you keep that energy when you see me, player. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I keep Chet Hanks him. I said you keep that energy. That's Mike Berkowitz, dude. That's what it is, dude. I'll fuck it. Listen, dude. Find Mike him on Berkowitz, IG. he wants, dude. I'll fucking. We, we, we <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm gonna send my Puerto Rican He's girlfriend to yeah. beat your Sicker. fucking ass, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Because if I hit you, it'll be a hate crime. Because I look like <laughs> I look like young. You know what Joseph we should do, though, Chrissy. What we should do is the three of us should do one show somewhere. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. I can tell about Theo's response. It was immediate. <laughs> what? There was a joke in there, and he went all the way back to the start. That he was fucking hungry to get in there, isn't it? Fucking hell, Brendan. No, it's a no. <laughs> you and I will get together. So He's not in. You and I will get together. We'll do it. I need to do it. Well, weird marketing technique, isn't it? Or a saying no technique. Let's do that one more time. 
You were supposed to co co headline maybe something in Tampa. Oh, yeah, we But your do that fucking again. agent said no good. Your agent said, told my agent, hey, listen, Theo will sell 300 <laughs> times the tickets Chris will, so they're not co headline. Did he really? Well, I said, his one fucking more time. respect. I said, respect to you, but. I, but I, Chet Hanks him. I said, you keep, you keep that energy when you see me, player. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I keep Chet Hanks him. I said, you keep that energy. That's Mike Berkowitz, dude. That's what it is, dude. I'll fuck it. Listen, dude. Find him Mike on Mike Berkowitz, he wants to do it. I'll <laughs> fucking. We, we, we <laughs> Here's the thing. I'm going to send my Puerto Rican girlfriend That's yeah. to I'm beat saying. your Sicker. fucking ass, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah dude. Because <laughs> if I hit you, it'll be a hate crime because I, like, I look like young You know what we should do, Girls. though, Chrissy? What we should <laughs> do is the three of us should do one show somewhere. Let's. Jesus Christ, bro. That was so heavy-handed. That almost came out of nowhere how we put that request in. No? Three of us should do one show somewhere. Let's do it. Ooh, yeah. Let's do it. Something? I can tell about Theo's response. It was immediate. No? It's a no. <laughs> you and I will do it. So He's not in. You and I. We got Zephano. I fucking love the Zephano. Why an absolute fucking top boy. And isn't it funny that the only time they used to have real laughs on that fucking, in that fucking studio was when Theo was around? Now there's no more Theo. There's no more genuine laughter. Everyone's just canning the laughs and wanting to make the person know we're sorry and remind them how upset they were. All this sort of nonsense is fucking wild. It is fucking, fucking wild. Okay, my friends. I have to jet, unfortunately. I catch up with the rest of the stuff tomorrow. I've got a jet. I've got work tomorrow. So I've got a jet. I've got work tomorrow. So I've got a jet. I've got work tomorrow. But, but it is good to see that the stream is running. The stream is running. Everything is clear. We have no issues now going forward. So I'm now going to be streaming as much as possible. Because before I was getting a bit tired. I was getting a bit lazy. Because I knew I had such a battle on my hands with the fucking computer. But now that I've got the computer to work. Now that I've got the fucking computer to work. And it's somewhat staying there strong. We're going to keep streaming now. So I'm going to be back again tomorrow. Then I'm going to be back again the day after that. Then maybe not the day after that, but back again the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that, because we're going to keep on keeping on. So thank you for those of you that are tuning in. I appreciate you. It's never a chore. It's always a pleasure. Make sure you like the fucking stream down below, and we're going to be back again. But look at it. Look how clear it is. Look, no, no jittery, no fucking lag, right? What a pleasure it's been to watch, right? And I'm doing this stuff for you guys because I felt bad the other day how shitty I came when it was all fucking all over the place. So I hope, I hope it's going to be good. Hope it's going to be smooth going forward so you can all watch it with no hassle and it doesn't look like some sort of amateur hour thing. And also, I hope from now on, this will stop the insults from some of you motherfuckers in the stream chat. Some of you motherfuckers in the stream chat that have been insulting me, talking about me being on fucking Tesco Wi-Fi, kebab shop 3G, all this shit in there, yeah? I hope you guys stop insulting me now because look at this. Look how clear it is. Look how clear. Look at that. Look how clear it is, right? There's a bit of motion blur there, but look how clear it is. No jittery, okay? So hopefully you guys put some respect to my name. No more insults. Right, I don't want to be crying into my pillow at night. So thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you guys. It's been a pleasure, never a fucking chore. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you smash the like button down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys again very soon. Peace. Thank you for hanging out with me, guys. Take care, my friends. Bye.